Accidents all over the place. This time, on the highway through hell. Oh, it's slippery. An old rival turns up the heat. You're out of bed. They're all chrome and gleam. I'm a work truck. Just hate to see him around you. And takes a job from Jamie. Acquiring's got it. It's money right out of my pocket. Take that, James. <laughs> and the new recruit. If it involves a tow truck, there's nothing that I can't do. Faces a harsh reality. The only people that care about tow truck drivers is tow truck drivers. Wow, 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 wow. In the rugged mountains of the Pacific Northwest, there's a highway like no other. The Coquihalla is an engineering marvel. But when the weather turns bad... Look out! It's like the Bermuda Triangle of truck accidents. Keeping the coke open takes an army. When the highway shuts down, the world shuts down. And a last line of defense. On route. A heavy rescue team ready to tackle any disaster. Because here, closure is not an option. This winter storm has turned the Coquihalla Highway into a war zone. She was so slippery this morning, holy Trucks and cars are spinning out on Snowshed Hill. Accidents all over the place. While the stranded drivers wish they were anywhere but here, there's one man on the mountain who couldn't be happy. When all oh, it's a fan, I start racing in my mind. I gotta get there, I gotta get there, I gotta get there. Adam Gazzola has been patrolling the Coquihalla Highway since he was a teenager. Always itching to get that next big job on the hook. I'm always scared somebody else is gonna beat me there and scoop me on the job. For Adam, this is more than just a job. Some people smoke dope or drink booze. I just tow. And that's my rush. Last year, Adam was the undisputed king of the hill. His Heavy Rescue 52 made more money than any other truck in Jamie's fleet. Adam is highly competitive. He will push his weight around. You send him out on the job, he's getting the job. But this season, Adam is no longer the only big gun on the mountain. Trouble on the mountain has attracted the attention of the Green Wrecker, run by Al Quiring. Yeah, 10 for I'm still fired up about it, actually. It gets my blood going. I, I don't believe he should be here. This isn't his area. He should stay down in the valley and tow with the other down there, as far as I'm concerned. But he keeps coming up here because he's got no work. Al lives a 90-minute drive from the Coquihalla Highway. This is not his backyard. Today's the day, my toes tingle. Maybe we'll get a five or a six truck jackknife. Al is notorious for his antics. We're bogging down the hill here in a two-laning highway. You know, he's kind of off in his own world. Coquihalla is making him go crazy this year. He's willing to take bigger risks than just about anyone to scoop a job. Me, my big old Vulcan wrecker, and my stop on tools. Oh, what else can the guy want? Just a little snow. But Al is no newcomer to mountain towing. I liken it kind of to the Hatfield McCoys. Um, their family's been in it for, I think, three generations, and ours has been in it for this. We're just coming on to our third generation. We've been competing in the towing industry for that long. And with a family rivalry going on three decades, there's more than enough bad blood to go around. It gets the hair, stands up on the back of your neck if Al's getting you on a job. Adam just goes through the roof. He'll be talking about it for three days and phoning me up and Al got us and blah, blah, blah. And so I don't only get scooped by Al, but I also hear it from our own guys. Their way of doing business couldn't be more different. 
Al is a one-man band willing to travel long distances to pick off the best jobs. Jamie has spent millions of dollars to base his yard out of the town of Hope right at the entrance to the cove. You're out of bed! Woohoo! As far as Jamie's crew is concerned, the coke is their turf, and Al is a poacher. He doesn't like the way we do it. I don't like the way he does it. They're all chrome and gleam. I'm a work truck. Their trucks are always shiny. My truck is dirty because I'm working all the time. Al has the mentality that uh, the whole world is his turf. I see there's another wrecker going by right there. And I don't know if he's coming for this one or not, and I don't really care. He's up here on the coke trying to scoop us. So I just hate to see him around here. What would you rather pay for, 10 men or one guy that works like 10 men? <laughs> How about that? Take that, James. <laughs> Al has good reason to be cocky. Jamie's number one truck is down. The new three quarter of a million dollar rotator has been benched by a 50 cent part. That's a PTO gasket that fits on the air, air shifter yeah. for the PTO that engages and disengages the winch, the winch mechanism for the truck. When that gasket leaks, the tranny fluid leaks, and leaks out. So the truck had to be shut down because had you kept going, you would have been buying a new tranny. Jamie may have saved the transmission, but at the height of the season, the rotator is still stuck in the shop. When it's snowing, you have to go out there and catch as much fish as you can. Having any truck down and, and not being available to make whatever scrap of money you could make is tough. Just after lunch, a trucking company calls for help over the radio. Just had a call. He needs to be pulled out because he is stuck. For Al, the chance to pull a fully loaded tanker out of a ditch sounds like a good payday. There's a 35-foot tanker trailer with a load of ethanol in it. He spun out and got himself over on the edge of the road. It's a job that on any other day would go to Jamie Davis. Just like a hunter that gets to the field first, he shoots the buck. Yeah, 10-4, thank y'all. Back at his shop, Jamie is still cooling his heels, waiting on a part. So you just hear that? No. That job up by Apex or whatever? Yeah, what happened? acquiring has got it. Really? Or how do you know that? I have friends in higher places. Two of Al's trucks went town, went through town, heading out when I was coming out here to see you about your... They were heading out? Yep. Two, both of his trucks. Really? Both town. The place we're going to is right up on the mountain there. If you see the buildings up on the... Uh on that rock face there, right behind the clouds now. For a guy who lives on the edge of Vancouver, the remote call is a long way off his regular trap line. We're in cougar country, not the ones with money. We're talking about the four-legged furry ones. To reach the wreck, Al has to navigate his heavy wrecker up a narrow gravel road. Always drive like nobody is ever gonna come and save you and you'll be okay. Here's our guy right here. When the rig spun out, the driver tried to back down the hill. It was too icy, slid into the ditch. And just couldn't get out there. Tried it a couple times before I get it too far in the ditch. We stopped. The tanker is hauling methanol, an explosive fuel destined for a mine located at the top of the mountain. The truck is now near its tipping point. If it flips over, we'll have a chemical spill, and then and that's not good. Arrow hook on the far side and get it turned. Just leave your brakes on until you turn a bit. If Al isn't careful, the tanker could topple over. Just leave your brakes on. Slip 
through. Al gets the tanker out of the ditch, but he decides to stick around. We take off and peel out of here. Chances are in the next corner he's going to have a problem. Al leads the tanker up the icy road. On one side of them, a cliff drops straight down to the valley below. So he's careful to keep his speed to a crawl. They make it through three sharp curves, but just before they round the last bend, the tanker spins out. I might be stuck on that last corner. I think we're gonna have to go and uh, pull that bad boy out. The hill is too much for the tanker. The only way to get it up is to tow it. On the Coke, it's a routine job. The road there is wide and a tow up is easy. We'll make some sparks. But out here, in the middle of nowhere, the high mountain switchbacks are a whole other story. It's been a bad day for Jamie Davis. A blown 50 cent gasket ah. has sidelined his three quarter of a million dollar rotator. Now, a big job has been scooped up by his longtime rival, Al Quiring. Yeah, I'm the only guy up here, and I got the road open all day long, no problem. But hooking up a loaded methanol tanker on a mountain back road. Here we go, guys. Turns out to be a handful. Let's get this guy to the top of the hill. See if we make it that far. It's a routine job back on the highway, but on a high mountain switchback, it's a big gamble. Recently in Norway, a heavy wrecker tried this move in broad daylight, but the semi being towed caught a wheel and dragged the wrecker over the edge. Incredibly, both drivers survived. There's no point in fooling around. Let's get up there. Now Al has to pull off this same move here in similar terrain and in the pitch black. Think you're done? That's just when things are getting good. Even with the horsepower of both trucks working together and Al's 12-wheel drive, they barely make it 50 yards before they run into trouble. Oh, it's spinning a little bit. It's like old man Winter's trying to hang on to that trailer so we can't get towed up the hill. But Al backs off on the power and nurses the two trucks up the slippery road. This is painful. Going up slow. His patience pays off. After 45 minutes, they finally reach the top. The mine gets its delivery, and Jamie's biggest competitor chalks up a win. Nothing wrecked, nothing hurt. More importantly, nothing leaking. Down in the yard, Jamie is impatient for his rotator to get back in the game. And the news of Al's victory last night isn't helping. The competition is on your heels all the time. If you're not being competitive and you're not, you know, moving forward with equipment and guys, you're going to die. 
Lately, more cars have been using the Coquihalla Pass, and that means more small wrecks. To keep up with the new calls, Jamie hired Greenhorn Rob to do the lighter duty tows. The chains are too long. Oh, this isn't good. Should I drag it like that up and then flip it up here? But that hasn't gone so well. No, but I went to pull it out though and it wouldn't come. Get a sledgehammer out of my truck, out of the box. Yeah. And then give it a tap because it's frozen. It's like, you know what, I don't know what I'm doing here. Maybe I should just cut my losses. So to fill out his roster, Jamie has hired a more experienced driver, Ken Monkhouse. I've been riding around in tow trucks for 34 years. I have experience in all types of towing. If it involves a tow truck, there's nothing that I can't do. Jamie recruited Ken in Vancouver, where only the strong survive in the dog-eat-dog -dog world of city towing. Ken understands competition. He understands who's on his back and who's coming for him, and he's following that game pretty big. Whereabouts on the Coquihalla are you going, my friends are wondering. <laughs> he's, uh, you know, that shark that's going to go out and get that car and bring that business in here. Five fours on location. It's all about competition. It's all about winning. You have to go out there every day and win, 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 no matter what the cost. Keep me going, keep me rocking. I'll work for three days straight if I have to. Jamie has high hopes for his new driver. If only Ken can survive his first season on the coach. Lots of truck drivers flying by at high speed. I'm not going to go back into Vancouver with my tail between my legs and say I couldn't cut it. It's not an option. Higher up on the coke, Adam is on the prowl. After the snow flies, you can't you can't sit on your ass and expect to make money. You got to be out there hustling up work, you gotta be listening to the radio. He's determined not to let Al take another job. Al trying to scoop us, you're just really rubbed to the wrong way. But Al's not on the mountain. He's pulling into Jamie's yard to drop off his new brochure. This is right off. Hey, James. I gotta say, if you need a tow, here's an information brochure. Oh, good, I got brochure. a brochure. Oh, thanks, Al. While well, this part, my drug, you sucked up all the business today. It's like a big vacuum. Get reports back all down the line. Al's already there. Beat me to it. Works harder. Yeah, they show up in fax machines now. We're modern. Yeah. That's for sure. You, you suck up more work than all eight of my guys put together. Bring her on. This is winter. Yeah. Let's get on with it. This has been going on for generations. It's money right out of my pocket. Come on, get out of town. I got to make some money now. Get, get back to Alder Grove. But while Al is rubbing it in, Adam is still working the coke, and his persistence pays off. At 9.40 p.m., the coke is shut down when three semis tangle up in jackknife. Adam is the first wrecker on the scene. What a mess, eh, Terry? Both southbound lanes are completely blocked. The truck for that trailer is actually spun around, still hooked to it. Yeah. It's on the other way. It's on the other way. I'll have to swing it right around over to here, regardless. Highway authorities ask Adam to drag the wrecks to the side to get one lane open right away. So as soon as we got single lane traffic, we'll just shut her down and get the traffic out. Okay. Yeah. This highway's guy is pretty antsy to getting her going, so. Because the rotator is still down, Adam had to call Hugo in one of the smaller trucks to help. So I'm just gonna tear this thing around and uh, get it off to the side. But the highway rep doesn't think that's enough firepower, so he calls up the competition. It seems Al Quiring is here. Al Quiring. With Heavy Rescue's best truck down, Adam is working shorthanded on the coke. Seems Al Quiring is here. And the highway rep has called Adam's nemesis, Al Quiring, hoping to speed things up. The idea is to get this red truck out of the way. Jamie's going to tow it down that way, out of the way. The next truck, Al Quiring should get it. We'll tow that away, and then we got single lane traffic. 
The last guy Adam wants on this job is Al. I just don't want him to get the job. That's my job. I just have a competitive nature, and I want to be the one doing it all. It's my mandate is to get the road open. It's always the way. And if it upsets some people, it's too bad. I need just to pull up out of the way there, Hugo. Okay. Adam and his crew race to clear the mess before Quiring's Green Wrecker arrives. Hey, Hugo, can you grab the front of that truck and spin it around now? Just spin it right around. Should be able to. Okay. Okay. Don't worry about your boom, just keep winching. We're just gonna get it off the road for now. Just get him to swing it around and we'll get old Bruce in here. He'll hook her right up off of it up to the exit. But 30 minutes later, the competition rolls onto the scene. Turns out, Al now has a night shift guy. Want a hand? Gord. Oh, I got her. Gord is Al Quiring's driver. Guys like him come and go all the time. No comment. With Adam on one jackknife and Gord on the other, the race is on to see who can get their wreck off the mountain first. We'll be out of here for the goblin is. The idea is get the road open as soon as possible. We don't want to hold up traffic. We wander when we have to. I'm going to yank this nose around. I'm going to pull the whole thing down the highway. The cab on Adam's jackknife is twisted nearly 90 degrees and has become so wedged in a snowbank that it won't move. I can't budget. It's got a full load of pulp paper on there, which is extremely heavy, and I got to try to pull this thing out, get it straightened around. Ah. Across the road, the quiring wreck is also stuck. Heat from the engine has melted the snow and the truck is now frozen in place. We broke it right off the frame, so we have to somehow rig that up. The Green Goblin's having trouble. But it's not going any better for Adam. He isn't sure if it's the weight or the snowbank that's holding back the truck. Let's hook that chain on somewhere on the front there around the spring or anything just to get it swung around. The trailer should stay where it is. The truck will just come around. Down the road, the highway rep is losing patience with Gord. He's struggling to rig his chains without doing more damage to the semi. Crush the up. We gotta get that thing out of the way before we can hook it on. Gord gives up on saving the hood. He hooks up to the frame and quickly gets the truck free. Adam gets the semi out of the snowbank, but he's still far from finishing. Well, the load's too heavy to go down the hill and they can't dolly off from the trailer because the landing gear is The cab and trailer are too damaged to be separated, but joined together, they're too uncontrollable to safely tow down the mountain tonight. Nothing we can do. There will be no victory tonight. All Adam can do is leave the wreck in a rest area pullout and head home. It's been a long night on the mountain. It's got a full load of pulp paper on there, which is extremely heavy. A three semi pileup pitted Adam and Al Quiring's trucks head to head on the same job. Quiring's wrecker completed the job but Adam had to leave a heavy load of pulp in a rest area on the coke overnight. This morning, Jamie is heading up to finish last night's recovery. The mighty rotator is back in action. Keeping the highway open. Partners in progress, safe for highway. Jamie's challenge is to lift the trailer off the cab so each can be separately taken down the mountain. I'll get the legs out. Our biggest competitor, the Green Goblin, would never be able to do this kind of a job. 
he can go up and down the highway and you know yell and scream on the trucker radio and tell everybody how great he is but at the end of the day he doesn't have the capability or the equipment hey don't, you know, don't scratch the paint man jamie prides himself in always having the latest gear is it heavy yeah it is heavy it's an obsession that started when he was just a teenager towing for his father's company one day when he couldn't finish a tow because his old truck broke down al quiring's dad swooped in to finish the job Al's dad had beautiful equipment, you know, way better than what equipment we had. You know, I was so embarrassed. You know, I think I went home and cried about it because it was just so devastating for me to not be able to do that job. Every part of me is driven to have the latest, most innovative equipment available. And I'm able to put it together with the most extreme jobs that happen in this area. Today, Jamie's bet on top-of-the-line gear pays off. Because the landing gear of the trailer was so mangled, there's no way to unhitch it from the damaged tractor. So the trailer needs to be lifted at one end, high enough for a relief truck to back underneath. And the only truck that can handle this job is Jamie's rotator with its swinging crane arm. Put your pin and you can hold it. He'll also be using a new piece of rigging called a spreader bar. Spreader bars spread the stress, so they're perfect for what we're doing right here. Jamie will use it to make a sling that will temporarily suspend the trailer. Take that one around the other side. Take your shackle and lay it on the frame. With the sling in place, he can lift the heavy trailer off the cab. Come on, Adam, pull the pin. Yeah, pull the pin. How are we doing? Wait there. We can pull it out. The smashed cab is pulled free, and the trailer is ready to rehitch to a new one. That spreader bar works really good. We've got it nice and suspended. A relief tractor can back underneath it here. And that's what we want to do. We want to solve people's problems here. Being able to go and, and tackle a big job like that, and with the crew we have and with the equipment we have, and make it look like it wasn't nothing, I go home happy, really happy. Down the hill, new driver Ken is in search of cars that need a tow. Drive up and down, look for somebody that needs some assistance. Well, find something to put on the back, take back down into Hope, and uh, maybe find something more. Working the Coke isn't like the big city towing he's used to. When you're in Vancouver, you go to work, you call in your truck, you get a call, you get a call, you get a call, you'll get 12 calls in a row. Whereas up here, it's not like that. You, you, you get in your truck and you have to drive around and act aggressively, actively pursue the work. They're, they're closed their hood, they're done doing what they're doing. They just put windshield washer fluid in, so they don't need me. After years of having jobs handed to him by a dispatcher, Patrolling the Coke is wearing thin. It's not like you're going to work and you're making 20 bucks an hour. Uh, you get paid commission, so if the wheels aren't rolling and you're not finding anything, then you're not making any money. You're just driving around pointlessly. So it seemed kind of to me to be a waste of time, which really got under my skin because I do like to stay busy. After eight frustrating hours without finding a single job, Ken gives up and heads back to the yard. Gamble didn't pay off. If this was a lottery ticket, we'd be throwing it in the garbage right now. But not everyone is so easily discouraged. Adam has been working for almost 12 hours. Coming up, uh, you have to take it real easy. He's pretty slick. He's gonna run to the top of the hill, see how much snow was out there. Just kind of uh, gauge where we're at for the night. So we're a 24-hour business. We don't have enough guys to do shift work. So when, you, when you're given that truck, you drive that truck 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Nightfall is the most dangerous time on the mountain. Temperatures drop, moisture on the road turns to black ice. There's a car in the ditch down over here. 
With none of Jamie's car towing crew on the coke, the light tow jobs are being scooped by the competition. There's no reason why these guys can't come up here and go to work. You know, they got good trucks to drive, they got fuel sitting in the yard. Oh, it's stressing me out because other tow companies are getting the work when we should be doing it. Later that night, Adam shares his frustration with the boss. We're only one man each. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> you, can only, you can only do so much work, right? And we've got all these guys around us who aren't doing it. They're not pulling it. And it's like, wow, you know? Mm -hmm. Unbelievable, man. It's wearing on you, it's wearing on me. I think we should bring the guys in and talk to them and see what they think. Mm -hmm. They think that somehow they're just going to be spoon-fed whatever work comes in. Well, you know what? you got to hustle a little bit around here. you got to know what's going on. It's getting my nerves up. It's getting Adam's nerve. Everybody's ticked off. It's like, wow, these guys aren't even on the planet. The next morning, Jamie calls his drivers into the office. What I want to talk about and what, what we need to talk about around here is our one tons, our car towing. Just to put it bluntly, it's lame. We've got a lame program going on. I'm sporting the insurance, we're sporting the, the truck payments and the repairs and all that maintenance and like that, and they're entering a car in his yard. And I, I understand, you know, nobody wants to go up there and sit up there and do all and there's nothing going on, but I mean, the guy's sitting down here doing all anyway. So if we go sit up there for eight hours, and we get nothing, we're up there for eight hours, we don't get paid. So you're gonna sit down here and do all too, well, and you don't get paid? And this is real, Ken. I've got cars in the ditch, I got the competition towing cars, and it's a real thing, it's a real problem. So I'm not yeah, pointing the finger at you. Up to us and said, you know what? We should get shifts started so that everybody goes up and sits. I've, no, I've, 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 first time I've, I've talked to all you guys that you guys should get up there in the morning. Have I not ever told you that? You told me you used to sit up there. And the you, you exactly there, said to me, the last we were having the drink, was, I'm going to start doing that. Okay. And have you ever started doing that? No, it was a week ago. So what's what happened here now? But the, you know what, Ken? It's not anything about you. You're getting all defensive about it. We're not pointing the finger at Ken. We're not saying Ken's the problem. Okay, starting tomorrow, I'll, I'll go up there at 8 o'clock in the morning. Well, well, we, well we should talk about it between the three of us. You, you get all pricky about it and, and that we're trying to roast you or something like that. It's not about that. It's, it's a real problem. And you get all defensive about it. It kind of pisses me off a little bit. I got to look at it from a business point of view too, Ken. I got to look at it from the dollars and cents. We either got to straighten it out or park trucks and take plates off. That's what we got to do. We have to have a little bit of a reality check here. That, and, and a reality check's going to come up and say, James, this ain't working no more, buddy. Cash isn't here. There's not cash, there's no trucks in the yard, and I'll, I'll be forced. It won't even be my own thing. This business will force me to, 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 to do this. Get rid of whatever's sloppy around here. Jamie Davis is frustrated that his newest drivers are not pulling their weight. I got the competition towing cars, and it's a real thing. It's a real problem. There's not cash, there's no trucks in the yard, and I'll, I'll be forced. It won't even be my own thing. This business will force me to, 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 to do this, get rid of whatever's sloppy around here. So, well, enough of that. We won't go on and on about it, so good. He, Jamie's made his point. He made his point very well. If it doesn't snow, though, and there's no work, there's no work. I have driven up there lots of times during the day, and I've gone all the way to Larson Hill and back, and there hasn't been nothing. I'm new here, so I have to take his advice and Adam's advice and Kevin's advice and roll with it. But before Ken gets a chance to hit the road, he gets a call from Vancouver. Go ahead, buddy. Tow truck friend who I worked with for a couple of years had been hit on the side of the highway. He was gonna lose both legs. He's a fellow tow truck driver, so basically he's, he's a brother. He's, he's me, but he's just a different guy. As he heads out to work, the dangers of the job become all too real. If that happened to me, up on the hill and I got hit and they didn't stop and I'm lying there bleeding out, I would be dead. In 25 years I've been doing this as a job, um, I've been crushed, pinned, squished, put a hole in my eyeball, broke the orbital bone, tore my rotator cuffs, ripped my bicep off my arm, got crushed or pinned underneath the motorhome for 45 minutes in the snow. But tonight when it gets cold and dark, it's gonna be really nasty. Under pressure to step up his game, Ken works into the night. 
The extra effort pays off when he's the first tow truck on scene at a nasty wreck. Nobody ever wants to see me or Jamie or any of our other guys, but when they need us, we show up. That's what we do. That's what we've dedicated our lives to doing. And uh, you know what? I'll be 90 years old, and nobody will remember me when I came out and changed their tire in a snowstorm. But you know what? I did it, and I helped somebody get along their way, so you can take some pride in that. When he gets the wreck back to the yard, Jamie radios where it should be unloaded. Put that in the bay there, Kim. It has to go in the bay, or you just want it in the bay because it's going to be a b getting it off. Police want it in there. Uh, I don't know why, but. Please make this come off the back of my truck without hurting anything valuable. Thank you. <clears throat> Talk to you soon. Oh, great tow god. Okay, so we're just gonna do one quick shot here. <laughs> oh no. It's not coming off. It's just sitting there. Oh, hang on. Am I being a moron? I might be being a moron. I could be possibly being a moron. Yes, I am a moron. Forgot to take the winch cable off. I'm a little bit tired. There we go. Sweet. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Thank you, old great toe god. Once again, you have blessed me. We have a MVI on Highway 5, southbound, north of the snowshed. We have Fraser Valley traffic en route. In the morning, a call comes in to clear a wreck at the top of the cove. A jackknife call came in, two lanes are blocked, and uh, the no post, the concrete meridian's been pushed out all over the place. So Adam took off. We're not going to let Alquire get there first. Tired of being scooped, Adam is a man on a mission. I keep my foot in it anyways. I want to make sure I get there before him. Wiring. Well, the police called us, so I guess we better cancel Al, I guess. Well, I'm sure Al Quiring's bad mouthing us on the radio right now. Adam wins the race to the scene. Now he has to get the job done. But the wreck couldn't be in a more dangerous spot. It's trapped on a cement barricade. On one side, drivers speed blindly out of a tunnel. On the other side is the slippery bottom of the Cope's longest and steepest hill, known to truckers as the Smasher. Holy Adam wants to get out of here as fast as he can. Oh, there's rescue right there. His first challenge is freeing it from the cement dividers. I need you to hop in there and kind of steer this thing a little bit. I want to get it, pull, kind of pull it out from that guardrail, you know? Don't turn, eh? What should have been a routine recovery... Unhook the cable. ...has turned into a jigsaw puzzle of concrete blocks. Pull on it. OK. OK. You get out of there, Brendan. Wait. Pull on the cable. Move these things like six times. After 45 minutes of juggling concrete, oh, that's good, that's good. 
Adam chalks up a win for Jamie's team. I did the wreck myself, and I was coming down the highway with it before I even got there. It's always funny when you pass them because they got always got their hand on the wheel and they're just looking at you when you're driving by and you just, just wave at them and you can just know they're pissed. <laughs> uh, it's just funny. Coming up, the high risk of towing hits painfully close to home. I hear sirens are coming. After a long and stressful week, Ken finally gets a day off. But it's a day he's been dreading. So we just uh, go down there and see how he's doing. And that's what we're going to do. Ken is driving to Vancouver to visit an old tow buddy who nearly lost his life on the edge of a highway. Lower mainline roads were ugly today. The accident was captured by a local news crew. He was shocked to see this red car had slammed into a... A passing car slammed into the back of a tow truck. Ken's friend was caught in between. I hear sirens are coming! The only people that care about tow truck drivers is tow truck drivers. We kind of got to hang out together, we got to socialize together, we got to work together, we got to watch each other's butt. It could be me laying there in that bed with no leg and hopefully people that I know in the towing industry would come and see me and give me some support. Just going to uh, try and keep my stuff together and, uh, you know, not shed any tears. Buddy. Hey. How are you? Well, you know, uh, things have changed a little. Oh, my God. Martin. How's this one doing? Well, I've had five operations on it. Holy I had God. three last week. Wow, 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 wow. And it was busted in ten places. Jeez. I'm on the ground. My leg is gone. My other leg is in like 12 pieces facing the other direction. And there's a car by my head. You stay conscious through all that? Actually, I even phoned the dispatch. As I was in survival mode. You stayed conscious through all that and phoned the freaking dispatcher. I swear to God. Well, no, I you, knew you, you were a tough guy, man, but I didn't know you were that freaking tough. But, you know, I'm going to survive. I'm going to get a prosthesis. I don't think I could take it as well as you're taking all this, dude. Seriously, I mean, that's... Well, I think I'd be a basket case, you know. Well, it's either you know, it's either I could be moping around and, or but yeah. that's not me. No, you got to be positive. It'll well, be this better. is it. This is it. Like, yeah. I know I'll walk again. Yeah, it's gonna be a rough road, but I'll do it. No more swimsuit model. Well, I no, but I'll be swimming. <laughs> I won't be wearing shorts. <laughs> Surprising what you do when you have to. Yeah, yeah. To see him still alive and still positive and upbeat and looking forward to the future with one leg. That's just, that's incredibly inspirational. He inspired me to just keep on going and keep towing and, uh, and stay with it and just keep doing the job. So we'll see how that goes. There's no crying in towing, I'm not allowed to cry. Next time on the highway through hell. Over a foot of snow in two hours. A record setting snowfall. We can't make it up even this little bit of a hill. High hazard. Triggers an avalanche. You see it? I wouldn't want to be in that. Is it going to hit the road? You guys have to go around. There's an avalanche. And a semi over the side. This is a hard job. Leaves Jamie hanging. We're afraid of losing it right now. Hold on, hold on.
just picked up on the hill in here. This time on the highway through hell. Over a foot of snow in two hours. A record setting snowfall. We can't make it up even this little bit of a hill. High hazard. Triggers an avalanche. You see it? I wouldn't want to be in that. Is it going to hit the road? You guys have to go around, there's an avalanche. And a semi over the side. Hmm. This is a hard job. Leaves Jamie hanging. We're afraid of losing it right now. Hold on, hold on. Oh. In the rugged mountains of the Pacific Northwest, there's a highway like no other. The Coquihalla is an engineering marvel. But when the weather turns bad... It's like the Bermuda Triangle of truck accidents. Keeping the coke open takes an army. When the highway shuts down, the world shuts down. And a last line of defense. En route. A heavy rescue team ready to tackle any disaster. Because here, closure is not an option. It's been a long three weeks. I didn't want to come up here today. A series of giant Pacific storms have been sweeping across the Cascade Mountains. Ah, well, this looks bad. Everyone is playing catch-up, knowing another big storm is predicted for tonight. Hey, you're not the only guy in trouble here. So go sit in your truck and we'll deal with you after. When the weather breaks, the army of plows grabbed the chance to clear the highways. It's a lot of work to try and stay a step ahead of Mother Nature. Broken tire chains now litter the coat and are wreaking havoc with snowblowers. Chain. Yeah, we got chain wrapped around the drive shaft on one of the paddles. So pick up lots of those. It's gonna be a little bit nuts to work up here. Yeah, well, I guess I'd get right in. The break in the weather doesn't give Jamie and his crew a chance to rest either. There's trucks that have been left in the ditch because of the storms. If these things aren't blocking traffic. They were just left to sit there for a while. And now we're gonna get set up and pull them out while we can. There's so much to do, Jamie doesn't even mind that his nemesis, Al Quiring, has turned up to work the coke. Right now, I would say that Al Quiring is the king of the coke. A non-stop towing machine. <laughs> you know why he's the king of the coke? Because I let him. Jamie has had every wrecker in his fleet on the road around the clock for three days. It's minus 23 at wind chill today. The cold and fatigue are taking their toll. I feel like I'm in Winnipeg, Manitoba. It's so cold. Okay, tell him, watch him, watch him with the brakes, Kevin. Let's pay attention here. Tiredness is kicking in. Damn it, you got a pull. Then, you know, guys will start fighting and yelling with one another. Sam, you listen to me. When you don't pull that line, it gets up on the drum. Hey, look at the blowing snow. Look at this. Holy. Holy cow. While Jamie's crew struggles with wind in the valley, high up on the mountain ridges, just above the Coquihalla Highway, Blowing snow has created a serious new hazard. The top of the peaks have kind of a wave. The snow is blown over the edge, and it blows over, and it blows over, and it makes what they call a cornice. So it sits there, builds up, it's getting heavier and heavier and heavier, and eventually gravity just takes it down, and the next thing you know, you have an avalanche. As long as the wind blows, the cornices will continue to grow into a ticking time bomb. Brakes on for a minute. Brakes on. 
For now, Jamie can't be too distracted by the avalanche risk. He's got trucks to clear and a crew begging for downtime. You know, always out of the corner of your mind, you're thinking, you know, you're looking up, you're looking up, and you're, you're, you're watching, you're doing your job, and you're thinking about it, and it's, it's ways heavy on your mind. You know, you're, you're in the kill zone. The good thing about this deep snow is it's pretty soft and forgiving, so there's pretty much no damage to this guy's truck. And he's going to be pretty happy about that, so he can pretty much drive it away and take it and go. After another tough day on the coke, Jamie's crew heads back to base for a much needed break. Been a long day, eh, puppy dog? Puppy, puppy. We've been going hard for three days. So we need to sleep now. When you've done a rack or two in a row, you're pretty beat. And basically, you're dragging your ass. It takes you a couple days to recover. We call it wreck lag, kind of similar to jet lag. But one crew member just keeps going. At 64, Bruce Hardy is Jamie's oldest and most seasoned driver. Bitch, come on. I worry about Bruce all the time. There we go. And we sent him on a job not long ago, and uh, we didn't hear from him for two days. And we're starting to wonder, you know, is he, did he, is he at some truck stop? You know, passed away. Or he works his damn ass off. For an older guy, that's a tough, it's a tough deal. That thing out of my face right now. Apparently there's a storm blowing over from, from Clinton or from Clinton, 100 mile anyway. Up on the coke, the highway's crew knows that their freshly plowed roads won't last for long. Right, tell me five by five, go ahead. We're starting to get uh, snow picked up on the hill in here pretty good. We're almost up into a moderate. Okay, thank you very much, and welcome to the jungle. Okay, 10-4, thanks. Derek Kitamura is running the show tonight. Just going to go up to Zopkius, uh brake check, take a look, see what the snow levels are like and the accumulations, and see how hard it's coming down up there. At just after midnight, the new storm arrives. 15 minutes ago, nothing was happening, and then all of a sudden, it's, the skies have opened up. Looks like some trucks are having problems going up the hill. It's Derek's job to decide when to turn on the signs, making chains mandatory for all vehicles on the coast. To keep traffic moving, he'll hold off as long as possible. What is this trucker doing? Now he's... Stuck. But the first spun out truck makes the decision for him. Look, we're gonna put the chain up left on. We're on our way down. These are the early stages of uh, what's uh, what's to come. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to keep things manageable and under control. At the bottom of the mountain. The pullout for chaining up is overflowing with big rigs. To avoid chaining up, some truckers decide to take a detour. The Fraser Canyon is often used when the Coquihalla gets really bad because it's closer to sea level. You got less chance of uh, snow and less chance of having to chain up. Also called Highway Number One, the Fraser Canyon route is not without its own risks. The problem with the Fraser Canyon, it's a two lane. It's only one lane going each way. So if something goes wrong, it's not like the Coke, where you can at least open up a single lane to get traffic through. Tonight, Highway 1 proves to be even worse than the Coke. Are we all stopped there? At North Bell, we're at a complete stop here. Yeah, they're turning traffic around just outside of Hope there. A head on with a semi has taken the life of the driver of a small van and the road is closed. It's hard waiting and just thinking uh, about the family of this person. It's very hard. Adam has been called to open the road. He's coming on the scene here now. 31 from 30. Yeah, we're good to go. 
Let's get it straightened out, get it off the road, and deal with it up at the next pullout. Let's get her on there any old way. Maybe a rehook for sure. We'll rehook it up later on. The pressure to get the road open is intensified by an even greater risk. I've just been warned by the road area manager that we're getting close to a moderate avalanche risk in the area that we're in. The growing snowpack up on the peaks has triggered an avalanche warning. Basically have to move everybody right now. We're not even supposed to be out here. Okay, thank you very much, and welcome to the jungle. Yet another blizzard is slamming the Coquihalla Highway. Down in the Fraser Canyon, conditions are even worse. A fatal accident has completely blocked the road. Let's get it straightened out, get it off the road. To add to the pressure, now there's the threat of an avalanche. Authorities want Adam to get the traffic moving right away. We're getting close to a moderate avalanche risk in the area that we're in. We have to move everybody right now. But he still needs to clear the total van. Sure, yeah, that'll do. Oh, hook the hook on that. We don't usually tow cars with this thing, but uh, I'll get it up off the road to the pullout and then they can start, start working on the highway. Hopefully it holds together. At just after two in the morning, traffic starts rolling again out of the danger zone. But the fierce storm only worsens. Yeah, just to be advised, we still have that spun out truck in the uh, southbound lane. Gotta go around him. By morning, it's pounded the coke with a foot of fresh snow. Hey boys, how's the Coca-Cola doing out there? It's nothing but bad news. We got a foot of snow up there. For many, even with chains, the battle to get over the mountain is being lost. Uh, it's been good until now. I was go I was crawling through. Really? The tires are really crummy, and we can't make it up even this little bit of a hill. This is the most snow I've seen in my five years. Every time we go down there and plow it, it's just like we haven't even plowed it, and it's just a matter of making one around. Everybody go, I can't do anything when you're here. Good day for Jack up at the top. At the summit, Adam is pulling a truck that got stuck on the smasher. Until the spun out vehicles can be moved, the plows will have trouble getting by to clear the snow. Snow and heavy right through to uh, Prince. It's just throwing on one set of chains or chaining them all up. But for some, the biggest worry isn't on the road, it's high above it. The more it snows, the more hazard you have. Um, they're worried about slides off to these steep slopes here. And if that happens, well, then the highway's totally shut down. On either side of the Coquihalla Highway, there are long, narrow clearings in the trees. These are old avalanche paths called chutes marked with evidence of past snow slides. When you're heading up the coke and you're driving along and you're looking left and you're looking right and you're, you're watching these chutes come down, it's just like being in a bowling alley, you know, and you never know when that big rolling ball is going to come down and, and uh, you know, take you out or take out traffic or the highway. When the highway was first built in the mid-1980s, engineers worked with avalanche techs to wind the road around the avalanche chutes. Where they couldn't, they built a snow shed. It's designed so that an avalanche can pass over the road without stopping traffic. Ed Campbell was one of the Avtechs who helped map out the road more than 30 years ago. Today, he leads a team of avalanche technicians tasked with monitoring the snowpack. We've had almost 200 centimeters of new snow in this last week and week and a half. So it's, it's a lot of snow. Even for here, that's a lot of snow. This year, the Coke is on track to set a new snowfall record. Since the start of the season, enough snow has fallen to bury a three-story building. 
the best indication of avalanches is avalanches. So I'm watching to see if there's any new ones, um, how big they are, and how far they're running. Their biggest concern now is all the backed up traffic. You know, you don't want to be in those zones. You want to be out of the avalanche zone at any, any price, any cost. You don't want to be sitting there. Dangerous. We're in a considerable hazard, is what we call it. So we can't have people stopped in the avalanche pass, right? You know, the odds of an avalanche actually hitting a car is, is kind of low. You know, the majority of the time there isn't a car right at this spot. But on a busier road, the chances go up. And then when cars are stopped, well, if an avalanche ran, the chance is 100%. Drivers are getting impatient. Some have gotten out of their cars. A foolish move in avalanche country. When the cars are stuck, the plows can't move, the roads get worse, more cars get stuck. It's a compounding problem. It, it uh, sort of starts to snowball. At just after noon, the worsening conditions of the coke combine with the growing snowpack above to force their hand. I just spoke with the Department of Highways. They're just issuing a road closure of the Coquihalla due to high avalanche hazards. Closed. High hazard. Highways closed. If the cars had been moving smoothly, uh, we wouldn't have closed. But as soon as we started having multiple areas stopped, multiple clog ups, you have to factor these things in. Uh, well, the idea now is to get everyone out. Highway crews start the slow process of turning vehicles around and sending them back down the mountain. Up top, Adam is rushing to free a stuck semi. Have him hold his brake for a minute. Knowing the risk, he wants to get this truck off the highway. I don't really want to be up here because you never know, eh? This is an avalanche area, so I don't really want to be sitting here if one happens. But 10 minutes later, Adam runs out of time. We got a runner here, I think. A record-setting snowfall has closed the coke, and the silence has just been shattered we got a runner here, I think. by the low rumble of an avalanche. You see it? No, look at that. Closing the coke paid off. But now, even road crews have to get off the highway. These vehicles must be out of here right now. Everybody go. A Huron and Outlaws came down right there at the chain up. You see that? Holy crap. They got slammed here pretty hard, boy. Holy You guys have to go around. There's an avalanche. They just had an avalanche go across the road at the bridge. Did they? Yeah. Right across the whole road? They say a big cornice came down to both slope out. Uh, it was a big deposit. The hazard is now high. So they're going to close the road so for road indefinitely. Closed. Definitely. That's a two and a half hour drive to get home now. The avalanche crew investigates the area where the snow slide reached the highway. The highway's closed until we can see what's going on at night. It's speculation at this point, but it's possibly, probably, cornice failure. If one cornice has failed, there's a good chance more will follow. Eliminating this danger and getting the coke reopened is now up to Ed and his crew. Their plan is to give Mother Nature a little nudge. We're going to try to start off our control today with a shot or two right near the Coquille Summit. Marked out in red ink, these are the start zones for the big slides. You and the other crew can go to the summit. There's lots of ways to do explosive avalanche control. Cannons, uh, avalanche guns, uh, shooting the projectile. Uh, there's hand charging, uh, there's helicopters throwing them out the door. But for this mission, their tool of choice 
is an explosive. Nothing gets you feeling more alive than having lit dynamite inside the helicopter. <laughs> Their plan is to fly above the ridge and to drop explosives directly on the built-up cornices, triggering a controlled avalanche. We want to go as high as we can on the start zone. You start something low down, there's still a potential of some of the uh, deposits being higher up yet. And you want to try to get it all. But when they get in the air, they hit a new problem. What's visibility like, Colin? Not great. Low-lying clouds are making it impossible for them to reach their targets. They decide to drop their explosives anyway. And start it away. Hoping they might break a cornice loose from below. There's one there. There's the first one. Uh, no results. Hard on that one. I was hoping it would knock that cornice off. The bombs trigger a few minor avalanches, but don't budge any of the higher cornices. Yeah, not pulling out any slab below. No. No, we've got to go in. Back to the barn. Yeah. Bummer. The avalanche risk remains high, and so the coke remains closed. If you want to turn around here and go back to Bolt. Okay. Back at the yard, there's no rest for the weary. Who told you to do that? Jamie is in a hurry to chain up one of the older trucks for an emergency job. A stuck snow grader is blocking the only access road to the town's water supply. If this job isn't handled properly, um, you know, the town's out of water. Jack it up more. Come on. Jack it up. Hurry up. Well, they're waiting. They're waiting. So when it's time to move, they got to move. Fast as you can go. Is it 24 or 22? Does it look like it? Is it the wrong size? No reason for this thing not to be chained up right now. I don't care what's going on. If you don't pull your weight, go home. Jamie isn't the only one who's impatient. The truck's driver is eager to stop fussing and start towing. They gotta get their together, everybody. A lot of these new guys can't keep up the hours that the rest of us can. 64, I can go 36, 52 hours without sleep. Doesn't bother me. <coughs> He's a heavy smoker and uh, not the fittest, you know, but he holds his own. He does. Uh, back down or drive down? Back down. Because the road is too narrow to turn around at the top, Bruce has to back his way in for a mile and a half. The risk is that Bruce can't see all corners of where he's going. The truck could go over the edge. It's not a bad road. I've been out worse. Far worse. Two years ago, Bruce's career nearly ended when he was almost killed on the job. He was pulling a truck out of the ditch. A car carrier comes screaming down the hill, and the trailer hit the tow truck, and Bruce got rolled down the whole length of the tow truck and thrown in the ditch, and the car carrier didn't even stop. He had a punctured lung, and he was bleeding internally. I know he had broken ribs. He was beat up a lot worse than he thought he was. After surviving all that, everyone assumed he would retire. Go away. But one day, six months later, Bruce showed up at work. Why he came back what do you think, Bruce? is still a mystery. I've always wanted to ask him why he came back to work, but he just he doesn't like to talk about it. I don't mind talking about it when I get hurt, but to he's just, to him, it's a, it's a sign of personal failure. Yeah, that's ancient history. Right now, Bruce's challenge is getting this grader unstuck. 
it's kind of tight in here, and this is a big machine. It's not a small girl. So we're gonna probably pull from here somewhere. The grader is blocking the entire road, so there's no room to roll it forward or back. Come on! We gotta make sure we do the job right. It's a job that I need to finesse. I need to be there and I need to make sure that it's babysat the whole way. Well, it's gonna drag on there a little bit, so it's gonna be tougher than you think. Slow but sure, eh? To free it, Bruce will need to lift the front end carefully and swing it onto the road without flipping it. A tricky maneuver that requires delicate hands. Truck's lifting up a little bit. It'll come. But Bruce doesn't do delicate. He's the typical guy where you just hook a chain onto it and you start pulling or start dragging and watch out. It's gonna be tougher than you think. So slow but sure, eh? Jamie's oldest driver, 64-year-old Bruce Hardy, has a motto. When the pulling gets tough, the tough keep pulling. I knew that was gonna happen. Bruce, he'll just do what he wants to do regardless of what you tell him to do. You know, he's his own guy. Bruce's hook slipped off, but nobody's hurt, and the grader is out of the ditch. Job done good, no damage whatsoever. There's no way in hell Adam would have got in here. Take it and go. Take it and go. He'll get the job done. He'll do it his way, though. The coke has now been shut down for going on six hours. Truck drivers that can't wait for fairer weather have no choice but to take the alternate routes. Now you can go Highway 1 or Highway 3. Yeah. Highway 3 is an old two-lane road that wasn't designed for today's high-powered rigs. Winding and narrow, it's the route of last resort. Shortly before midnight, one unlucky truck driver finds out why. When the truck went in the ditch there and trapped the occupants of the vehicle, we call it search and rescue. The driver, his wife, and their pet dog were trapped in the cab for over an hour before being rescued. It just took off on them. Couldn't break, he couldn't do anything. Couldn't steer out of it or nothing. Adam is out of bed and on scene just after 3 a.m. Luckily he didn't go down much further or else he would have rolled into the creek. The loaded semi is teetering on the edge of a steep cliff. In this darkness, it's in too precarious a position to risk a recovery. Just all the hidden, hidden dangers that we can't see right now. Adam decides there's nothing more he can do for now. I think we'll just pack her up and get the hell out of here, and wait for some more daylight and extra help. By morning, the storm has passed. Get your seatbelt on. Today, Jamie is going to help Adam recover last night's wreck. Good day for a wreck, eh? Yeah. He brings along eight-year-old James Jr. James is not at school today, and you're going to learn how to be a wrecker guy? Maybe. That's where we're going, is our accident. The truck went off the edge after hitting ice on a hairpin turn. Adam is already on scene. These people are lucky to be alive. I mean, they're hanging off of a cliff here that's 650 feet down. Hmm. This is a hard job. What makes the job hard is that the loaded trailer is almost completely undamaged, and Jamie intends to keep it that way. Like, I can get in here and lift this trailer, no problem, then what? what do, how do we hang on to this front end, right? It's not that we couldn't pull this out. No, no. Another option is we try to disconnect it, but 
there's a lot of pressure on that pin and, and it's probably highly unlikely we're even going to do that. Yeah. You know, I'd like to have another rotator here. You think so? Yep. We need another rotator right on the front end of this truck to do the least amount of damage. Two rotators with their two boom arms extended out over the cliff could lift the 40-ton semi without damaging it. Pick the whole thing up and bring it up over this bank. Come on, James. We're going to phone Uncle Jason to come and give us a hand here with this one. Is he going to get paid, though? Of course he'll get paid. Should, you don't think he should be paid? No. No? <laughs> Jamie's brother, Jason, runs his own heavy rescue business. But he and his rotator are two hours away. Just a few miles to the north, the coke has now been closed for over 20 hours due to a high avalanche risk. The truck stop in the town of Hope is crowded with drivers, eager to know when the highway will reopen. See, if the truck ain't rolling, I don't make money. But there's nothing you can really do about it. Last I heard, they were going to assess at 9 o'clock this morning and let us know what time they would reopen the road. Today, the clouds have lifted. All ready in the back. Ready, ready. Lifting. Okay. Back in the air, two on board. Okay, where are we going? In behind us there? Yeah, to the left. Yeah, to the left, yeah. Okay. Just about our level here there okay. now. Okay. They close in on the biggest cornice, packed with tons of overhanging snow. Say the word. Now, they've got to drop a bag full of explosives, smack on top of it. Okay, are you ready there, Paul? Yep, I'm all set. Nighter's on. Nighter's on. And... <laughs> Use lit. Use lit. Stop the wind. Okay, let's go high. You have a visual? Are we gonna get air blasted here? The Coquihalla Highway has been closed for over 20 hours. To get it open, high-flying Avtex need to blow apart snow-packed cornices. Okay, are you ready there, Paul? Yep, I'm all set. Use lit. Use lit. Stop the wind. Let's stop, no problem. I like it. Okay, let's go high. For almost a day now, the highway has been closed to all vehicles. No traffic, no plows, and six inches of fresh snow. The challenge of getting the coke reopened is now in the hands of Blair Barr. So I'm just gonna hop out and take a look. Clearing this much snow would normally take eight hours. Blair and his team have to do it in four. Hopefully the plow truck will be able to uh, make it up the hill. With this heavy, wet snow, it'll be a tough push. The hazard's been reduced to moderate. We can work right through the whole zone now. Okay. Pressure to get the road open is enormous. You have millions of dollars in, in equipment and cargo stopped. This is a main corridor feeding Vancouver to the interior of BC. So any delays in opening this highway really do create a lot of complications for a lot of different people. To meet a four o'clock deadline, snow removal crews are throwing in everything they've got. Over on Highway 3, Jamie's brother Jason has finally arrived with his rotator. That's your cousin. He's got enough equipment to do it all on his own, just about, so I'm surprised I got the call. 
With the Coca-Cola closed, Jamie has no choice but to keep Highway 3 open to traffic. With these rotators, we're doing the job without blocking the road, so um, there is no road closure happening here. Just sit it on top here, right on the berm, and then we'll move across one more time and give it one more pull. The plan is for the rotators to lift the semi from either end, while Adam's truck keeps it from falling any further down the cliff. I'm going to pull the trailer back as they're lifting, so I need these chains to hook my lines to so I can winch it backwards as they're, as they're lifting it up out of the ditch. But first, they have to rig harnesses underneath the truck. It's really deep down there, just so you know. Almost had to get search and rescue to pull me up when I was down there the morning it happened. All righty. I need to pick. A small stream running under the front of the truck has formed a thick sheet of ice, cementing it to the ground. Perfect. As long as I break it up, could just poke through on that end, we'll be good. The 60 degree slope gives Jamie a chance to show off some of his finer moves. Hang on. Roly poly! Can you get it there? And eight year old James Jr. thinks rigging looks fun. Hey, you can come. Grab on the cable and pull yourself down. Long ways down, eh? Okay, good. It's enough cable. Now comes the hard part. Down this to suck up the wind. Getting back up. Just remember, it's hard to get back up the bank, right? Go this way. Go around that way. You just stand right An there. hour later, it's rigged and ready. But there's a big risk. There's no way of telling if the cargo inside has shifted or not. You can't open the doors in that trailer because, and find out where the load is. Because if you do, you just, you know, breach the integrity of the, of the box. So you make that guess, you go up there and you hope that that's the right guess. So Jamie has to gamble on how to balance the load. And you never know everything. We could end up having a situation where we do have a lot of weight all concentrated in this front end. If he took a sudden stop or something, you know, we don't know that yet. If he hasn't found the exact center of gravity, the off-balance trailer could plummet down the canyon, possibly taking one of the rotators with it. We'll probably have to bring it up, set it back down, and then grab the center, right? So we're not going to KO that guy's bumper. Uh, he, he's going to hit something. Oh, understandable. I want to save this truck and do less damage to it. I mean, we might get some damage to it coming up, but we're going to try to keep it to a minimal. There's a good possibility if the trailer could break here in half. You don't have x-ray vision to see in that box to see what's going on. There must be a pile of weight in that thing. I want to pick it up a bit more. Go up high, lift it about three or four feet. I'm going to boom in a bit, okay? Pulling against each other a little bit. Okay, pretty soon I'm gonna have to boom out, Jamie. Hold on, hold on. Stop! Jamie has called in his brother Jason to help him pluck a loaded semi off the edge of a steep cliff without causing a dime of damage. So let's go up high, lift it about three or four feet. The two rotators have managed to get 40 tons of truck dangling in midair. Hey, pretty soon I'm out to boom out, Jamie. Hold on, hold on. Wow. But now, they've got no place to put it. So we're afraid of losing it right now. And we don't want to take any chances here. This is a pretty critical thing. Let's get this thing on the ground as quick as we can. So what we want to do is just get it in tight, reset, and do another pick where we're a little more comfortable with it. We're right on an edge here, so it's very possible for this trailer to flip over. To make room to set the truck down, Jamie's rotator needs to briefly release its grip. I'll just kind of move ahead a little bit. 
He has to move over. It's unnerving a bit, even to us guys who've been in it a long time, to have that thing hanging there. So. Hey, Sammy, you ready? Let's get it in here and on the road. All right, Jim. Hey, hey, hey. Going down. Yeah, that's good. Just beautiful. That's a textbook job. What are going on, man? What are going on? Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. You, we didn't drag the oil pan over a rock. We didn't drag the whole unit up and puncture a hole in the bottom of the trailer. We didn't damage the frame on the truck. That, that's about as good as you get it in this business. Back on the Coke, snow crews are racing to meet a four o'clock deadline, but the wet, heavy snow is making a tough job even harder. They don't seem to understand what it takes to do this. You know, like the roads are in bad shape, so if you can only go up and down this highway so fast, Supervisor Blair Barr is trying to monitor progress on over 50 miles of highway. Go ahead, Rich. Sweep to Porsche is complete, southbound. Clear, clear, and in. As time runs out, he gets word that the last stretch of highway is clear. Hey, everybody. Uh, we've opened at 4 o'clock as scheduled. After 29 hours, the longest closure all season, the highway through hell is once again open for business. Uh, we're going home on time, eh? You betcha we are. Back in Jamie's yard, the crew is wrapping up another long day. That's good there, eh? Exhausted from battling Mother Nature, Jamie's crew decides to take the night off and enjoy a little sunshine. Good the first time I've ever seen without cowboy boots on. It's the shoes. It's beer time. As the night winds down, Ken sees a chance to get Bruce to open up about why he came back to work after his accident. I'm going for another drink. <laughs> we go bowling and uh, get some beer in them and then just uh, get some more beer in them. Have some fun. Fun usually makes people talk. Bruce is kind of a strange guy about talking about things. I guess he figures that if he just leaves things alone, it'll be all right in a few days. His legion of North American fans want to know more about this crazy, irascible son of a gun. So do I. Bruce, go on the hell. It seems Bruce is finally ready to talk. I still remember it. What happened? Working on the side of the road? The third hit, I rolled with it. I rolled with it. Not a chance I was checking out yet. They asked me, what do you want to do? I said, what the f do you think I want to do? I want to go back to work. That's what I know best. I don't like sitting around. Can't make money laying on your ass in the hospital. You know, he's just a one tough old cat, that guy. He's a warrior. He just pounds and pounds and pounds and pounds. I don't think you can wear that guy out. I can't believe it, these guys live pretty far down. Next time, 
on the highway through hell. A small job. It's coming out. Everybody stand back. Turns into a major headache. Mad. And a father's dream for his son to join the family business. Are you interested in maybe learning how to drive? You can't just do that. Backfires when Brandon has priorities of his own. What was the problem there while you walked off the job? I can't believe it, these guys live pretty far down. This time, on the highway through hell, a small job. It's coming out. Everybody stand back. Turns into a major headache. Mad. And a father's dream for his son to join the family business. Are you interested in maybe learning how to drive? You can't just do that. Backfires when Brandon has priorities of his own. What was the problem there while you walked off the job? In the rugged mountains of the Pacific Northwest, there's a highway like no other. The Coquihalla is an engineering marvel. But when the weather turns bad... Look out! It's like the Bermuda Triangle of truck accidents. Keeping the coke open takes an army. When the highway shuts down, the world shuts down. And a last line of defense. En route. A heavy rescue team ready to tackle any disaster. Because here, closure is not an option. It's late in the season, and the first signs of spring are appearing on the coke. But for crews battling to keep the highway open, the melting snow brings a serious hazard. What I'm concerned about is we're gonna get a flash freeze tonight. These rapid temperature fluctuations are a recipe for every driver's nightmare. Black ice. You have to take it real easy. She's pretty slick. Let's see what they're driving on. Before you know it, you're completely out of control. I hit some black ice. I was in the ditch before I could get it corrected. The truck's been sitting there for a couple hours. Last night, a semi hit a patch of black ice and skidded all the way over the concrete barrier. This truck is a completely jackknife. For the highway that is that, but yeah. Brendan, do you have the sandbags? After just a few months on the job, Jamie's stepson Brandon has moved up from flagger to junior swamper. I like wrecks. I hate working around the shop. It sucks. It's boring work. I like wrecks and coming out here, learning something. When he works, he does his job, and he does a good job. You want to cut that sign off, Jim, or no? You want to put a strap, get a little strap, I'll try to lift it out. Careful. Today, Jamie lets city boy Ken try his hand at rigging. Okay. Just watch this. Isn't there a tow pin in the center of that thing? The way they've got it hooked up there, all I need is a single hook in the middle of the, they've got it over, over rigged up there. So all we need is one in the middle of the bumper, that's all. Got it? But as soon as they get one problem solved, they run into another. There's a puncture in the gas tank, eh? Brandon, you know those white 
cloths we got, you get a couple of them and put them in the hole in the fuel tank. So let's unhook this thing and get off the highway. Bob's gonna start screaming at me any minute here if I don't get this highway open. Yeah, so fold that up best you can and get it into the fuel tank. Okay, let's go, back up, Bruce. Should be good. All right, time to bug out. 40 minutes on scene and the highway's back in business. Last week, Brandon got his driver's license, and that's given Jamie an idea. We've got that one-ton little truck, and I'm thinking that um, I could build one for Brandon to drive, you know, like a little pickup one. You can't even go to a wreck and stand for eight hours, let alone get behind the wheel and drive. Oh, it's like, okay. He's young yet. Well, we need well the weekend will come, he'll be, oh, I don't want to drive till the this weekend. <laughs> I got Jim to go to. Is I got that... Jim to go to. <laughs> I don't think you should buy him a new one right away. No. I think it's just a waste of time. Nobody in that I know started off with the best truck. You gotta start off with the junkiest one. Then you kinda graduate into the next truck. Hey, Bran. Yeah, yeah. Now that you've got your, uh, your license now, I've got the old Ford there. Yeah. Are you interested in maybe learning how to drive a little bit on it? Drive tow truck with it? Well, possibly, yeah. It's the worst truck we got, but it's probably a good one for you to learn. So on. I deserve the worst truck we got, eh? Well, that's what it is. So uh -huh. at least if you blow the engine up or whatever, I don't really care so much. Yeah. I haven't driven this truck since we bought it brand new. <laughs> back brand in, new? Back in 1997, she was brand new. Now look at it. It's a good old girl, this baby. I'd like to get to the point where I could retire and the, and the kids could run it. That's, that's kind of what I'm grooming things to do. Hopefully these guys could learn and, and have the right skill set so I could go to Mexico or do something like that. But Brandon's got other things on his mind besides towing. He dedicates two hours every day to working out at the gym. Well, I used to be a chubby kid. I didn't like being a chubby kid anymore. I realized, you know what? I'm almost 200 pounds and I'm five foot seven. This isn't good. So I went to the gym and uh, Worked my ass off. Going to the gym made me a, a much better person, ultimately. I don't party at all. I don't mess around with any of that. It's not worth my time. The gym, it has become the biggest part of my life. I focus on it as much as possible because that's what I want to do. Hopefully as a career when I'm older, own a gym, own something to do with fitness. That's my goal. Up on the mountain, winter has returned. The next morning, Jamie heads up Highway 3. He got a call to recover an SUV that went off a cliff. But first, he has to find it. Well, we just know it's at an area called Skagit Bluffs. And there's one area we called Dead Man's Curve in there. That area is known for wrecks. The snow up here can be 12 feet deep, so it's possible for a wreck to stay buried until spring. We're looking for a Nissan Pathfinder. A green one. I don't know exactly where he would be. I just can't make out any kind of thing that looks like a car. Oh, man. Oof. We know it's somewhere in this five-mile stretch here, but uh, I don't know what else we can do today. Unable to find the wreck, Jamie heads back down to focus on another project. Turn again, so we're slowing down. Before right. Brandon can drive his own truck, he needs to learn how to drive standard. And you can try. How's that? Okay. Here we go. Okay. So what's the first thing you do? Clutch. And then you're in gear. Now, what, what did we just do? <laughs> okay, try it again. A little, little bit of clutch and a little bit of gas, right? In sakes. You're not, you're in the wrong gear. I was in first. No, you weren't, you were in third. Yeah, so you did it. Drive a little bit. And try what? Holy Put your foot on the clutch again, now go to the next gear. 
You don't stop though. You can do it. Mm -hmm. Put it in low gear. This is how my dad taught me. It was just like this, buddy. Clutch the next gear. Holy See, you did yeah. it. <laughs> you did it. Yeah. Okay, so go here. this way. And then speed up as you get on the road. Okay, now go to the next gear. See? Okay. Yeah. We did it. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> okay, go down now. That was pretty good. So, 101, eh, right? 10, 15 minutes, you got her down pat. So, you're doing really well. I don't think there's any issues at all. I'm excited to start something new, right? Because I've always been the guy to be behind the guys driving and be the one helping them out. So, it might be nice to start driving myself and see what it's like. Next winter, I want to be up there with the boys, towing, helping out, not only with my hands, but with this truck, and get myself on the road. Big hill that brown this year. After a few warm days, Jamie heads back up to Skagit Bluffs, hoping the snow melt might uncover the missing wreck. To help him look is salvage expert Jim Lasser. This will be the second attempt to find it. Yeah. Maybe there's hardly no snow here. There it is right there. Wow. That's a quite a ways down. There it is right there. Wow. Melted snow has turned what looked like a boulder into an SUV. Quite a deal. The car lost control on a patch of black ice and went over the cliff. Incredibly, the two people in the car lived and were able to climb out on their own. For a guy to go down a thousand feet in a car over a cliff like this has got to be the most amazing deal that's happened all winter. Fuel leaking from the SUV is an environmental hazard. Jamie's challenge is getting it back up the cliff. Even though it's only a car, it's one of the biggest jobs of the year that we'll deal with. So this has got some vertical just below us here. Does it? Yeah. Where do you see that? Well, right, if you right look in at, here? if you look at, yeah. Just, because you can't see. It's, yeah, it's got that vertical section right there. Mm -hmm. Once you get the vertical, you're rock climbing, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How far down do you think that is? A thousand feet. A thousand feet? Yeah. No truck in Jamie's fleet has a cable that long. We'll go back to the shop and uh, we'll get some things figured out. Over like this and then down. The first leg of the journey is the worst part. Jamie estimates they'll need 1,500 feet of cable. What size of liner are you thinking about using? Well, let's go in the yard here. My, all my straps are, are three quarter inch. And, I, and I, that's what I'm saying. You, you put over, you put 1,000 feet of three quarter inch, you're up into 1,200 pounds and two guys aren't gonna hold that from sliding. People don't really realize that cable is steel. So 1,500 feet of cable is a, is a lot of weight. If you have lighter line, that'll be a lot easier too, right? Rather than, taking, than trying to work three-quarter straps. Do you know another idea, Jim? Yeah. We constantly use 3 8 or 7 16 And when we're done with the cable, I'll put it on the, I'll use it over time on the truck. Thank you. They decide to buy a new spool of lighter cable used to tow cars. It'll have to be hauled down the cliff by hand. A perfect job for buffed up Brandon. Why don't we do the recovery tomorrow? Yeah. Possibility. Yeah. Uh, that's not because I have plans for tomorrow. Like what? After work. We were planning on going shopping. I don't know about that one. Can we do a Friday? What I find frustrating is when I was his age, you know, I'd grab my dad's small truck and I was out there hustling, you know? But this time, dad gives in and pushes the job until Friday so stepson can go shopping. Friday morning, everyone is up early to prep for the recovery. Oh, yeah, He's not even here. Everyone except Brandon. No answer. Hey buddy, you're missing out. Lost another job, then that's your phone. Lucky I answered the phone. We're still in business, sorry. Yes, we're ready to go. He's a typical teenager. He's got his own agenda. 
probably the least important thing in his world right now is making a dollar. Brandon, you knew we were gonna go do the job, but uh, Brandon's disappeared. Frankly, I'm pretty frustrated with it. I've, I've about just had enough. Look at the snow line. The snow line's dropped right down. Yeah. Look at the fresh snow here. Yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting the heebie-jeebies about this. Test, one, two, three, test. The higher they go, the worse it gets. Wow. Wow, look at this. Everybody's spinning out. Chuck's all spinning out, man. Not even going anywhere. Yeah, this is unbelievable. I can't believe it. Me neither. Oh, man. Hey, just, just like winter we were doing. Yeah. This is unreal. It's tearing me apart here a little bit, whether we should carry on with this job. I mean, going over the bank in the snow and it's snowing is not such a big issue. You know, should we really be on this road when it's snowing out and working when people are driving, you know, the highway? You know, the conditions are really not that great for doing this job. I mean, look at the snow. The crew pulls off the road at the brake check to figure out what to do. I can't believe there's this much snow. We just left town. I know, I know. If it's like this up here, it's going to be going up and down that bank, right? Even with the cable. So. Well, what I worry about is being on the highway. Yeah, well, I worry about everything. The highways so. guys will have a bird if we're yeah. on there. No, this is no. not like this. Not safe. It's It's been there for a month already. Another couple of days ain't going to hurt her, right? Yeah. Stand down. Stand down, boys. Stand down. down. It'll be okay where it is. Nobody's going to steal it. <laughs> By the time they get back to the shop, Brandon is finally home from the gym. I know what I have to do every day to keep everything in check here. So when, when the other guy isn't doing it, you're looking at him like, well, you know, why are you going to the gym? You know, we got responsibilities here. We got to pay the banker. You got to have some get up and go and some gumption behind you to get to work. Like, like nowhere land is nowhere land. You got to go to work. You got to do something. You have to have a reason to get up every morning. And you gotta have somewhere to go and something to do. I gotta go to the gym every day. That's, that's my something to do. The things still need to be done in there. You don't find very many 16 year olds that are gonna wake up at 3 a.m. and go out to work. You can okay, go, well, ask go, go help Sammy right now. Wait, go please. ask a couple of Just get some, something done. That, that shop isn't sitting there costing money for me every minute of the day for people to pop in and work when they feel like it. Monday morning brings clear skies and spring weather. Jamie is itching to get the Skagit Bluffs job over with. Now we're kind of on our fourth run to get this car out. Hopefully we can just pound this off and get it out of here. It's kind of been a chicken around my neck. Brandon came to work today, but after last week's no-show, Jamie's put him back on flag duty. I can't believe that these guys live pretty far down. It'll get dangerous quick, so... Jamie decides to send down Sammy and city boy Ken. You know, you like, you want to come up here and work with the mountain guys, then you come and work with the mountain guys. Let's see where you go, because it's not like that in Richmond, I'll tell you that. You sure you can handle this big city guy? No problem, buddy. You sure you're going to do her? I was born in a ditch. I know, I know a Richmond <laughs> ditch is only, Richmond ditches are only five feet deep. Oh, so no, there's 25 feet deep. This is 1,500 feet deep. I'm 10 deep. feet tall, so that's 35 feet, pal. Think you can handle her, city singer? Yeah. Hang her, no problem, man. Okay, that's well, what see. I was born to do. All right. Are you good with going down there, Sammy? Yeah. You don't mind going we with him? got a... Bula. Belly, belly, bula, bula. 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 bula, 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 bula. So the two guys that are going down over, can we go over some rope gear with them? Let, let me get the ropes off the rig, rig gear for these guys. Jim gives them a crash course in mountaineering. Over there, we're gonna go off that pole and down off that pole. Okay. You fall and roll 1,500 feet. That's good. You're dead. Take your two hands, you know, slide this up the rope. Yeah. And you can tighten up on it and you can pull yourself, you know, for climbing back up, right? Okay. Okay, so go back down to the bottom and do the part about going up again, just so I make sure I got it. I know it's simple for you. You know, you'll slide this up as you go. And okay, I got it now. Sammy goes first. You ready to start going down? Yeah. Hold that knot in one hand. Let's go slow, Sammy, there's no hurry. Jim, how far Ken is? Is he okay? Halfway down, Sam. It's all good. 
big 10-4. The bank is so unstable. Can't make any wrong moves or you're going for a swim in a real cold river. The next challenge is getting the cable down to them. We have a 16 ounce lead shot bag. This is full of lead, 16 ounces. We've got this, this line is a really, really strong line. So we shoot it with a giant slingshot, but I'm hoping the bag will make it close and they can grab it and pull it. Once they can pull the line, we will tie the cable on the other end of this rope and they'll pull the, rope, the cable down to them. So we're gonna do this? Yeah, it should be. There's just the two vehicles, Brad. Okay. Take one, and the shot bag goes nowhere. Got caught in the in his slingshot. Take two. Try it again, yeah. Ready? Oh, that went good. Holy Stand man. back. Let it go. Wow. Ah. Good shot, kid. See, it's pink and orange. Straight up. All the line we had out. Yeah, it works good. It's right there. So that's that's a bonus. You're you're only 50 feet away from Sammy. Good deal. 10-4, pull the string. That's in the same spot. Here, let me do whip it. Oh, the cable died or just just some? Oh, there's lots more. You you got enough to go all the way to the car. It looks like it goes down on an angle, then drops off. So it looks to me like there's probably another 25 foot drop off right at the river's edge there. You can't really see that up here from this point. Ken gets as close as he can, but it's not quite close enough. Are you okay down there, His chin strap must have broke or something. His helmet came off. Hopefully we can get it back. It's like a $250 helmet. Oh, it's gone now. Marcos, what are going on? You like that river, eh? So we got a little bit of a bite on it with it. You threw a kind of a hook into it without going into the river. So we're going to do a little pull just to see if we can get it a little closer to shore and we can hook up to it better. Confirm you want us to pull there, Ken? Pull up on the cable, please. Ever so gently, Bruce. No spool is big enough to take up 1,500 feet of cable. So the plan is to run it through a pulley on the rotator's arm, then attach it to Bruce's truck. By driving forward, he will pull the car up the cliff. We're not actually winding it onto a drum. We're just driving ahead, and it's pulling the 1,500 feet. Can you let me know when you want it stop? 10-4, copy that. Very, very slowly. Keep going. It's playing slow. Very, very slow. Stop. Okay, I'll stop. The car is now close enough that Ken can re-rig the cable more securely. Go ahead, slow, Bruce. And take it easy. This is a small line, right? Keep coming slow. Go ahead, slow, Bruce. Jamie has finally got the elusive wreck on the hook when. Okay there? Is everybody okay down there? Did it break the cable or a clamp? The cable snap. Where, where did it break at? Up here? Where is the cable sitting? I can't even see it. Right here, right where that bush is. 
I see it down. It's scaring me, man. You're going down, you're gonna slide right down. Where it broke, wherever it broke, down, it's still attached to the vehicle. And now you have that other end. Where is the other end at where you guys are? I have no idea where it broke. I think it broke up closer to where you guys up in the tree line. We didn't do any damage to anything or what? So it broke right at the pulley where you usually do. Right at the pulley. Exactly where it snapped, right where it goes through the turns, goes through the pulley. And then. Didn't win this one. <laughs> we took a risk here. We took a gamble on the lighter cable. You know, for, for the guy's sake, packing it down the bank where they can barely walk on that bank, what would you want to do? Would you want to have the big heavy cable? We took a gamble. We tried it. Didn't work. I don't want to come back here again. This thing's one of these things that just costed me nothing but money, right? We're just figuring out what to do here. Stand by. Cable broke right here. So there's all the cable up to this point. So, so there'd be no problem bending it over, putting a clamp and putting a line on it once you're down there. We could use my line on there, we'd get it up to there. Jamie's plan B is to double up the broken cable and then pull it with the stronger main line from his rotator. So now instead of one 3 8 line pulling up on the car, uh, we have two. Now he's got to explain that to the boys below. What he's trying to do is get a double line going on, right? So um, we're going to let it down again on my other main line. Then what you do is you'll put the uh, doubled cable through the hook. Run your other slack line down as far as you can so that we can try to get a double cable. Just, just, it's always stupid when it's like this. So, it gets stupider as you get more tired and it gets darker and colder. Keep on trucking, keep on plugging away. Ken and Sammy connect the doubled up cable to Jamie's single main line. Now they need to get the broken end down to the wreck. We've stirred up all the loose stuff now, so it's like pretty much I can climb up ice. You want me to take this with us? No, you don't need this now, right? Well, no, not really, because all we're doing is joining the... All we, all we can do with what we have is join the cables together. Yeah, two we've here, got, two got, here, and two up there. That's what I think it meant. And this, okay, I don't know what this for. Where the Copy broken that. piece goes. There we go, give me that. So that's the piece. I got you, monk house. <laughs> what the hold up? Now, how hard is the pull this line down? I know. Up the road, Brandon's been flagging for going on eight hours. Got this chill on the road. Are they in the clear now? Hmm? Are they in the clear? I don't you know. I can't know? see them. I can't see them, so I don't know where they are. By the time the new rigging is finally ready, the sun is down, and it's starting to rain. Yeah, I can show you got it. Yeah, here we go. Cable's just about here. It's not even pulling the car. I don't understand. It's not even tight. What do we got? 3,000 feet of slack? But now what do you do? This is unbelievable, man. I'm winching and winching and winching and winching, and everything's going up, and the cable's coming, and everything's. I'm thinking, okay, geez, that's pretty easy. Where's the car? How far did they get down with that second piece? Well, I don't know. Like, look, we got slack. They couldn't have made it back down to that car with that line because the only the same metal line we had up to Bruce's. Hey guys, what? what? Up there with the slack here. How can we have slack? We're doing the survey here, trying to figure out what's up. Everything's clamped together. Everything's tied together. They didn't do it properly. Is what they didn't no, do. No, they just tied it in part way down. I bet. So, yeah, I think he wanted us to go right down the car. Instead of attaching the broken end of the cable to the wreck, they attached it to the cable itself. When Jamie pulled, all he got was slack. Un 
unbelievable, man. All day, and we haven't even managed to move it out of the drink. All day to move it 30 feet. That is the most stupidest thing. Let's tie this off. Ain't happening. It's the end of the day today. I don't want to do any more. We're not winning this one. I've been to this job four times now. I've had enough. Jamie's not the only one who's had enough. Look at that piece of What? Brandon, he just walked off the road. You can't just do that. He wanted to go home because he was wet. There was 15 other people there that were wet, cold, wanted to go home. Well, we weren't whining like that. What was the problem there while you walked off the job? Uh, you asked me, as a, I do this as a favor for you to come out here. And why, why are you doing me a favor? Because you had no other flagger, so you're telling me you need me to do this. I, so well, I, I needed anybody to work today. So like I, I, never, I worked 11 hours straight and I was tired of my- 11 my hours? Clothes. It's been nine o'clock, I've been on the call. So we've been out here and I've been my legs are giving out. I'm laying on the road. I, I can't take that. Like, I'm tired. I'm beat. I'm wet. I'm drenched. I'm standing. I can see if I was so why would you walk around. off the job, though, when we're, we're done in I five or ten minutes? So I'm coming here but as a don't? favor for you. You're, do you're just doing me a favor. This isn't I mean, fun. You're here to work, though. I'm <laughs> why do you think you're doing me a you, favor when you're working? For you, because you're telling me to. Everybody get in a truck and get ready to go. Why does everyone treat me like I'm 50? Like I'm, I'm like a grown adult trying to pay my car payment, my bills, my food payments. Like, what the hell? How is this my fault? Stop, stop. Ain't happening. We're not winning this one. For Jamie, a long day of frustration was capped off by Brandon walking off the job. What makes you so special that you don't work? You either sink or swim. You know, there's been numerous times where He's been sinking, and you know we've got to get him to that next level. And that's what I'm working on with him. The next morning, Jamie decides it's time for Brandon to get a little lesson in how the towing business really works. So go, go get coveralls on boots. It won't take long. Hurry, let's go. Or I'll cut you off from the company gas. He wants to always rely on me, always rely on me, but I, I, I can't make work my number one priority. If I commit myself to this towing thing, I'm gonna be doing this towing thing for the rest of my life. Attitude is everything, and good attitude will get you faces, right? Give Brandon a little training exercise to Jamie and I, see uh, if he's got what it takes to be a motor truck man. That's a diesel, right? An old, worn-out diesel. Okay. This. Nope, not it. Pop the hood. Main one. I think that's the main. You don't get to start off in the best truck when you first start. I don't want to start off in the worst truck. There you go. If you're gonna give up life before you even start it, why don't you just grab a shovel and dig a hole now? If, if, if. No, he's gonna get punched out. That's a bad attitude. How about you shut the up before I knock you the Come out, you little. Relax. Shut the up. I think he's just too spoiled. Doesn't wanna do nothing for himself, and that just proved it. Hey, Bram. Mm. Come here for a minute. Don't get all pissed off because he's egging you on, right? And, and run away from it. Let's deal with it. Let's, let's go through the stages. And that's part of learning how to start. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this old van that's been rolled over already. We're gonna lift that van and we're gonna roll it over in the yard. And then we're gonna teach you how to roll over and hook up. You want to go get a truck out? One time? Yeah. Where do you want me to put How it? How many times do you think you'll stall it from here to there? 
Put your foot on the clutch if you need to, right? That stops you. It's good. Where do you want it? So you just put it through here. Pull it around. So you see what you just did? You didn't, you didn't have to do that. Now just give me this end now. Perfect. Okay, so you can go ahead and winch it up. I don't know if I'm supposed to go up or down. Up is up and down is down. Stop on that one. Yeah, you're getting it, that's right, that's right. Whoa. Holy It's taking forever. And we'd be out of here pretty soon. So take this now. Put that where that hook was. Okay, put it in there. So what you've done now is you've done two things. Instead of dragging this sideways now, right? You're not dragging it into the mud, you're lifting on it. How do you know? Well, you'll see. And we've done two other things. You've also reduced the working load. So instead of this load, say, pulling a 4,000 pound pull, it's only gonna pull 2,000 pounds. So now you're not dragging it anymore, eh? Recovery is the most funnest job you could ever have. It's neat, isn't it? That thing comes off and hits me in the face, I'm gonna be pissed off. And then just back up in front of the car as if you're gonna get it off the highway right away. I don't like driving standing. It's okay, you're gonna learn it. Sucks. It sucks. Just park like it and we'll unhook it and you're gone. Ugh. Where? Put it in a spot. Put it between them two there without Jane, smashing. come on. Take it and go. Enough's enough for one day. Occupying myself as a tow truck driver for the next 10 years to 20 years, mm-mm. You can lead the horse to water, but you can't make him drink. I can't just go buy a truck and say, here you go, there's insurance on it, and here's a fuel card, go to work. And, and you don't go to work. Monday morning, Jamie and his crew are back at Skagit Bluffs to hopefully finish the most frustrating job he's had all season. Maybe this will go a little better today. Today, Jamie didn't even bother trying to get Brandon out of bed. Whether he stays in this business or carries on in it or doesn't or, or finds a different line of work, that's up to him. You know, I, I'm, not, I don't have a, I'm not pointing a gun to his head to do it. To get the elusive wreck up the cliff, Jamie has brought thicker 5 8 inch cable. We brought the bigger cable because we're frustrated and mad and the smaller cable's not working. So this time, no matter what happens, we're getting this car. Let's start unrolling this. Try to pull this out, go right down past my truck. You get such a long distance, that's a lot of heavy cable to put down a hill. The thicker cable is much heavier and harder to control. If a bigger cable starts to wind its way down the mountain and it takes off on you, it'll, it'll take off like a snake. Somebody could get hurt down there. To help with the extra load, Jamie's sending down a third man, part-time helper, Gord. You guys want to start going down? Okay. Buddy, you ready? So it's working. The more they feed out, the heavier the line hanging down the cliff gets. Until... Whoa, whoa, whoa! Ugh. You okay, Gord? There he is. He's up. Wow. With only a few feet to spare, Jamie and Ken are able to catch the runaway cable. Once it's in place, Ken heads down to help rig it. Well, I hope we get it up here. I don't want to come back here again. I might have to give up on the job maybe if we can't get her. There you go. Okay, hey, now where's that chain? We need the rescue back in here. Because Bruce is on another job, the only truck Jamie has available to do the pull-up is Kevin's rescue truck. Do you know what we're doing? I hope so. I kind of explained it to him. Like... Last week's cable break has Kevin on edge. If the cable snaps, I got no protection, so at least this door will protect me from taking my head off. And then I just run the winch with my foot, right? Start pulling? Yeah, go ahead. Give her. Scared. What's Kevin doing way up there? Hiding. 
<laughs> he's actually in the cabinet, isn't he? he? He's so scared. He's totally inside the cupboard. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Kevin, fuck, fuck, fuck. What's that? I wanted the chicken to come out of his the house there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bobby. Is it still in, is the car moved? As the car starts to move up, the hillside starts to come down. We gotta hold for that. We gotta get way out of this zone here because we got everything coming down on us. Brutal, brutal, brutal. I think when you pull a little harder, it's gonna pop past the top of the trees. Find its own path. Yeah, I'm gonna still swing the boom over a little bit and help it out. Jamie uses the boom arm to carefully steer the wreck up the cliff. Guys at the bottom, let me know when that thing's gonna hang up on the tree or whatever. But this crumbled car seems to have a mind of its own. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh -oh. On his fifth trip to Skagit Bluffs, Jamie's finally got the wreck halfway up the cliff. Hold it. When it goes off course. Hold it. Whoa, 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 Hold whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Is that thing into the tree now? That is stuck on it. Nobody knew that it would go to the tree. It's just the geometry. There's a crown to where the, the fallout area is, the rock slide there, the rock bank and it decides to go where it wants. So you might have to move it over or some kind of get it out in the middle. Thanks for telling us. Okay, we're gonna get Gord down. Put the other one to hook up, okay? 10-4. The wreck is far enough up that Jamie can run a line directly from his rotator. We're gonna hook this chain into the rear end, is it okay? That's beautiful. Right the rear end. nothing now gonna stop the big line. No, she's coming home. Coming home to daddy. Coming okay? Looking good, buddy. Coming up nice, coming up backwards on its rear wheels. After three frustrating attempts, the slippery SUV is finally back on the road. We finally slayed the dragon, yeah, that's good. I've had enough of this thing. Looks good, Jimmy? Good to go? Good, go. Okay. At the end of the day, Jamie lost money on this job, but he got it done. You know, you just don't quit. You know, we, we're not quitters. We're not guys to just walk away when there's a bad day or a bad week. Brandon may not be keen on towing, but he wants to show Jamie that he's not a quitter either. So he's invited his stepdad to join him at the gym. I wanted him to see how hard I can work and that I am dedicated to something. I'm not just, you know, your average teenager. Huh? Ready? You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let me have my lunch here first. You gonna show the old man how to buff up? Yeah, hmm? she has done. How to live properly and stop drinking beer? <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is gonna actually screw up the, our, our program, me and, me and Adam's website. How's Big, that? Bigfattowtruckguy.com. <laughs> <laughs> okay, whatever, I'll see you there then. Show them the basics in here. Show them what I do. This is called a gym? Yeah. This is what you do while you're not working and not making no money? That's right. Oh, we can be in deal, whatever. Yeah, no problem. Didn't know it was business hours today. Yeah. yeah well, it's full dedication to the gym. <laughs> Hey, I guess but, not. Um, yeah, I don't, are, are they paying it or is the insurance guy paying it? I'm losing money. You're swinging your arms, you're swinging your arms. You gotta keep your arms more, more locked in. You're good, you're good. So you come here every day? Every day, 40. 40. Oh, I could feel that. Yeah, it's really, it's like the best one. Three, two, perfect. Whoa, where are you going? <laughs> you still have three minutes left. 
So we're gonna be doing shoulders. So we'll start off with 40s. Holy <laughs> Did you just set me up on that one? No, you think those are heavy? <laughs> heavy? Holy. Why did you I start me at 40? 40s, I can do 70s. I know you can I do 70s. I can do 70s. about actually 80s. <laughs> I can't even do it. Flesh. I can't. No, no, no. Don't. No? That's no, heavy. Oh. Now put it down. That's unbelievable. <laughs> do that again so I can see you do that again. I can't believe you even did it. Holy moly. That's 120 pounds above your head. That's right. I've been doing this for about like two years now and I've been dedicated since day one. I want to be the best of my like, gym, gym to my world. ability, you know, I want to do the best possible. Well, that part of his, his work ethic on the gym side is, is spectacular. <laughs> Proud of him for that. And he could teach me a thing or two. Nothing much left to that. Next time on the highway through hell. Ah. Look out! Rock slides Gary. cause a head-on collision. Holy moly. That has Jamie under the gun. Well, I want to get this highway open. And a harrowing ride up the coke. White out conditions. Look, you can't even see. Can you here? Pushes Kevin to his breaking point. We shouldn't even be here. I don't need to die for my job. Nothing much left to that. This time on the highway through hell. Look out! Rock slides. Gary. Cause a head-on collision. Holy moly. That has Jamie under the gun. Well, I want to get this highway open. And a harrowing ride of the coke. White out conditions. Look, you can't even see. Can't have a here. Pushes Kevin to his breaking point. We shouldn't even be here. My ass is puckered right up now. I don't need to die for my job. In the rugged mountains of the Pacific Northwest, there's a highway like no other. The Coquihalla is an engineering marvel. But when the weather turns bad... Look out! It's like the Bermuda Triangle of truck accidents. Keeping the coke open takes an army. When the highway shuts down, the world shuts down. And a last line of defense. On route. A heavy rescue team ready to tackle any disaster. Because here, closure is not an option. been the snowiest winter in three decades, and winter isn't over yet. The coke's a mess. Gonna need to chain up. Snow and ice on the coke have drivers scrambling to get through the mountains any way they can. My, they got slammed here pretty hard, boy. Holy Down at Jamie Davis Heavy Rescue, the crew is gearing up for the next battle. Well, you can bear hug it then. <laughs> I'll leave you with that. I've got everybody kind of motivated to get on their trucks and get them fixed up and cleaned up and, you know, kind of get our act together so that when things hit the fan again, we're ready to go. It's Kevin's job to keep his rescue truck stocked up to Jamie's standards. But Jamie's not always pleased with his performance. Anything you need, you get. Sometimes, Fill I'll... the truck up. Tomorrow? Oh, oh, I there. forgot. I'll... Oh, it wasn't there. I'll oh, I'm going to do it tomorrow. Full. Make a list, Boom. make it happen. Then 
you get to one job and you don't have that one thing and then everybody comes down on you like, why don't you have that? It's like, well... Today, Kevin could be excused for being a bit distracted. He just got his hands on some high-tech gear. Got it on Monday. Just trying to get used to what all these numbers on the screen do and what to look for. Kevin got a camera in a pawn shop and he started filming our accidents. I feel like I gotta get all the action. That's a mess. See this new bad boy? Wow. I think he just needs a little bit more guidance and a little more tricks and knacks of the trade, but once he gets those down, you'll be good. I'll actually leave this sitting right here, on, ready to go. And then if I can, I'll just grab it. I wanted to show my buddies, you know, what kind of work I do, like back home, or show my mom or my family. Still looking at the road while I'm driving. I'm not going to be young forever, so I would like to back away from this and get into the film industry a little more and do more shooting, do something different while I still can. <laughs> On the other side of the yard, Sammy is tending to the rest of the fleet. Sammy does everything. I work in the yard, get things organized and stuff like that. Oh, I love it. It's awesome. It's a great job. Sammy's a low man on the totem pole right now, but got a great attitude and people love him. Okay. One for rich, or anyone's back. Everybody's always calling for him. Hey, Sammy, Sammy, help me, help me. So he's always helping everybody around here. If I scratch the side of my truck, I'm gonna kick your ass. Oh no, just learn how to drive. Not all the guys pull their weight around here like he does, I'll tell you that. Well, keep working it, buddy. You don't got this truck washed yet? He can walk out the way around, buddy. He's my sidekick. He's rescue guy number two. And he's actually older than me, and everything I ask him to do, he does. He doesn't question me and stuff like that. He just does it. That's good. That's coming out good. Yeah. I do this and then still go out, do the wrecks. I love it. If we get a wreck tonight, well, then it'll be dirtier for tomorrow. That's right. If you take Sammy and Kevin and, and line the two up together, they're yin and yang. Even when Sammy's having a bad day, he's having a good day. You gotta work hard and get strong. When Kevin's having a bad day, he's having a bad day. Pisses me off. I'm gonna smash that window myself. It's probably not far down or anything, I wouldn't think. At 9.30, Jamie gets a call to tow a moving van that got hit by a falling boulder. The steep canyons along the highway are notorious for rock slides. Here, even a single rock, pried loose by ice and rain, can be deadly. Guess a rock went through the roof or something and that's all the info we got, so... We were driving along and just smashed! She just hit the roof. It was probably about the size of a microwave. So lucky though, like two seconds before, I had just leaned back and the rock like came down and the roof all caved like right in front of my face. It was wild. No oh, warning. no warning at Didn't all. see anything. There no. was no debris on the road, so I wouldn't even have thought to look out for it. Pretty traumatic for them part. If it was a bigger rock, it definitely would have gone through, and it definitely would have been dead. If not dead, very seriously injured. So I think someone upstairs was definitely looking after them. Not everyone is so lucky. In 1965, just outside of Hope, the entire side of a mountain crashed down onto the highway, burying three vehicles and leaving four people dead. There was transport trucks in there, a few cars that are underneath the rock still to this day. The road was buried under 300 feet of mud and rock. They just rerouted the road. That's how they fixed it. That could happen again. We get rock slides in the canyon all the time. On these mountain roads, even a small slide can trigger a disaster. Is it a big wreck up there or what? 
How, how many trucks? Two. They're all that material. That night, a semi swerving to avoid a falling boulder causes a head-on collision. The call comes in to Jamie at just after 4 a.m. Just north of the China Bar, one guy just swerved to miss a rock, and then one guy went over the bank, and the one truck burnt to the ground. The truck was over the embankment, and they're unsure whether there's any other vehicles with it. Is it uh, bumps and bruises or serious? Seemingly the two drivers are being brought down to the whole hospital. Tevar. This job's a huge job. I've dispatched uh, flagging, flatbeds, big wreckers, the rescue's going. This is China Bar Tunnel. It's supposed to be just on the other side of this. We'll see the rock slide there. Unbelievable. Nothing much left to that, eh? And there's one over the bank here, too. Holy moly. Good 100 feet down. It's just before dawn. Jamie's crew arrives at the scene of a head-on collision between two semis. Nothing much left to that, eh? Unbelievable. Good 100 feet down. A rock slide onto the highway sent a large stone through the windshield of a super beam, knocking the driver unconscious, sending him into the path of an oncoming truck. Both rigs burst into flames on impact. The super beam slammed into the rock face. The burning reefer plunged over the cliff. Holy moly. By the time Jamie's crew arrives, fire and rescue have left the scene. Both drivers have been taken to the hospital. Unbelievable, man. The road has been closed for hours, and highway authorities want it open now. Uh, I'd like to get it open as quick as we can. Public safety is our number one concern, but we also have a lot of commercial goods that are being held up. So I want to get this highway open. To do that, Jamie needs to get what's left of the Super B off the road while working directly beneath an unstable cliff. Just pull this thing, and if these legs dig in too, too bad, we'll stop, but at least we'll go five feet ahead or whatever. Hugo and Adam drag the hopper trailers onto the road so they can be hooked up and towed away. But clearing what's left of the burnt out cab is a bigger challenge. Burn jobs in general are hard to handle. It was totally wrecked, it couldn't be towed. It needed to be cut up to be moved properly because any bigger pieces couldn't fit on the flatbed, so we had to put it in pieces to get it onto the flatbed to get it off the road. As Kevin fires up an acetylene torch to cut up the cab, Jamie spies a new problem. A leaking pool of green winter diesel fuel. Hang on. We've got a fuel leak here. We burn it, it sparks. That catches on fire, right? So we can't have that. The diesel needs to be siphoned into a barrel. But someone left the barrel back in the yard. And I had a barrel in here yesterday, and Sammy took it out. There again, I look stupid. Like we we should have put it in the back. I was up until 9 o'clock last night because I moved my thing ahead and I'm doing a bunch of work. But what do we do with it? Generator in there and stuff, you know? Drink it? It's a mistake. That's all, you know, happens. So, and Sammy uh, took the barrel out of my truck. Okay, stop. Just stop for a minute, okay? We'll take a five minute breather. That pisses me off. Sammy and Kevin don't always get along. There again, I look like oh, a stupid one. Kevin can be really growly to deal with, and Sammy will go, you know what, I'm not dealing with your today, buddy, and, and they'll get into it. He decides some, for apparent reason, to take it off. And if they're having a bad day, well, have a bad day. I don't care. Well, whatever. We'll, we'll... If he didn't like it up there, for the meantime, he should have threw it in the back. I'm getting a headache. You guys have a bad day by yourself. I'm busy. Back. Ken, get the mini berm up on the uh, shelf on the right-hand side. 
Jamie improvises using a portable spill tray called a mini burn. Okay, get that started up. The crew scrambles to scoop out the diesel. There's that bucket. Buckets, buckets, buckets. Buckets, buckets. But the delay doesn't go unnoticed. Shoot for 9.15 by 9.30 at the latest. Come on, Jimmy. They're given 20 minutes to do a two-hour job. Hey, Hugo, get your gloves and give them a hand. Yeah. Okay. But they want this highway open like right now. With time tight, Adam goes back to cutting down the cab before the diesel fuel is all drained. Just uh, cutting a bolt to this cab, or we can lift this cab onto our deck truck. We don't want a bunch of this on fire. Just lift that lift up. Lift it out now. of the way. Okay. Are we ready? We're going up. We need that mini berm now. Okay. I didn't see them coming from behind, so I... It's not the camera, it's the attitude that goes with it. Can't you see I'm filming here? Meanwhile, you need him to do his job. I should put it away pretty quick and uh, start helping again. Before the highway can open, all the scraps need to be off the road. We've got only five minutes left to get the road open in time. We're under pressure right now. Let's get off the highway, buddy. Right now, no matter what you're doing, get off the road. Can I talk to the flagger and just tell them go? Yeah, we got the all clear. Yeah, the road's finally open. Traffic is moving, but for Jamie, the job isn't done. The other truck is at the bottom of a steep ravine, and he's got to get it out. You know, it's over the bank, probably 100 feet. Not much left of it. With another storm forecast for tonight, Jamie wants to wrap up this job today. To do that, he must pull up the fire-gutted shell of a trailer in one piece. But first, somebody's got to climb down and rig it. Hey, Sammy! Okay, grab that block, run it down to Sam. The tough job works its way down the heavy rescue food chain. Okay, we'll do this one first, Sammy. This is not pissing down rain. You see the snow up on three yesterday, man. Yeah? Oh, what for the rock? I heard them girls were hot. Drag it down to the truck so we know how much we got. A little more. Look at the splash block down there. And we're gonna see if we can hook it up. We're running on the cable. Keep going. You need a hand, Sammy. One of the guys on the salvage crew finally volunteers to give Sammy a hand. Just like your logging days, eh? And when the job needs a third rigger. One, two, three. One, two, three. <laughs> you go down. I got a pull rank this time. Down below, Sammy and the others struggle to rig the heavy chain to the fire damaged trailer. We've got hundreds of pounds of chain, and it's just hard to hold it up and pull it tight. It's just heavy rigging. And half the crew's up top watching. Just capturing what kind of carnage we got. Gotta take a breather. Is everybody clear below? We're coming up. He's a rookie and he, he's poofed out from going up and down that bank about four times. So oh well. You should be down there. With your job. 
the rookie's got to go down the bank. You know I, I put my time in going no, down the bank. You know what? You got no balls to go down there. Yeah, one more. Sammy's busting his ass here. He's up and down the bank. He's doing really well. I want stuck after that. <laughs> No scotch. I need a bottle of scotch. Yeah, a little bottle of scotch, please. <laughs> the boss says a little bottle of scotch, too. The rigging is finally ready. The challenge now is pulling the fragile trailer up the hill without it falling apart. Well, the rock's gonna rip it all apart. We don't want that to happen. You know what I could do? I could maybe just drag it this way a bit for you. Okay, let's get this rotator. Is that enough chain there? To free the trailer, Jamie has Sammy and Hugo run a line from his rotator. Jamie and Adam will have to carefully coordinate their winch lines to inch the fragile trailer sideways around the snag. Hey, at least his tires are rolling, so that's good. Oh, they're right there. Well, what we're doing right now is just, I'm just doing uh, kind of directionally moving it around, around the rock, right? So I'm steering it. If the trailer breaks apart, it could take another full day to pull up all the pieces. Am I away from the rock? Keep going. The plan works. Hey, uh, I need the low bed up here. Because it's too destroyed to tow, the burnt out hulk has to be hauled away on a low bed trailer. But Jamie's worried about pieces flying off. Come on back, buddy. It's hanging over quite a bit. It's pretty looking. So we're gonna have to chop saw that off. Whatever's left over can go in the bin truck. Can do Sammy once again steps up to the plate while Kevin covers his back. Sammy, I promised him a bottle of scotch because he worked so hard and he deserved the uh, extra bonus. A great part of the team. Two bottles of scotch tonight. Two <laughs> bottles of scotch tonight. <laughs> he deserved two bottles of scotch. By late afternoon, Jamie's crew is doing mop up. Two complete semis. Burnt on the ground, one a B train, one a reefer trailer, one 200 feet down a bank, and we've got our crews lick that whole thing up. Both lanes of the highway are finally open, but danger remains. We're concerned that if any more rock comes down, it just comes straight out onto the road and will hit any cars that are passing by. A geologist is brought in to make a visual inspection of the unstable cliff. We'll bring a crew out to do the scaling up there. But for now, the need to keep the highway moving outweighs the risk of another rock slide. Tomorrow, a team of scalers will determine just how safe the cliff really is. Beer clock right now. Yeah. After a hard day's work, Jamie's crew settles into what they call beer o'clock. And Jamie makes good on his promise to Sammy. No problem, Sammy, he worked so hard. He gave it his all that day. He, he put in an extra effort, probably more than the other guys did at the job site. You got hustled your ass so hard today, right? Mm-hmm. And I know you love scotch. Mm-hmm. Remember I promised? Yep, you did. I promised you two bottles of scotch? Yep. Well, they didn't have two bottles of scotch. But I got one big one. One big one. No problem. Thank you, sir. As you were employee of the day. Yep, that's right. That's what Bollywood was. No, no. He talks the talk, but he don't do the walk. Right? 
Now it's scotch time. Bula. Ah, very good. Well, good. Now we can rock and roll. At 7.30, Jamie heads home to his family. Back in the shop, Sammy settles in for the night. After the wrecks and stuff, I come in. I do my own thing. During the week, Jamie's office doubles as living quarters for Sammy, who's also the night watchman. And I have a, a shower, right? I have a shower. There is a bed, like I had a bed. Yeah, snowflake. Hey, buddy. Everything's all there. Fridge, stove, plus TV. Well, I'm here to work. That's all it's to it. It's like camp, man. You go on a camp, you work, right? I'm from Fiji. I came here when I was 13. I didn't want to come here. My dad says, oh, all the kids got to go. I said, OK. OK, you know what? I made a good move, I think. I work here, and I go home. That's it. I work for my family. I got to take care of my kids, my wife, because I love them so much. <sighs> Across town, Kevin is spending his evening reviewing his work. My old man, he was like a running geek when it came to electronics. Like he worked in TV. Everything they had, he had to have too. Yeah. Ah, uh, see if up with the focus, sir. You know, my dad wanted me to get into the media world. And I basically told him if I wanted to be a truck driver. And he told me truck drivers are basically So I, him and me had it out, and I haven't talked to him since. I should have listened to him now when I look back, but at the same time, who needs him? I haven't needed him in 20 years. Why would I need him now? Sort of thing, right? The Red Dream Team, all in action. I've known Jamie for about 10 years. I got total respect for Jamie. I, I've sort of adopted him as my dad, you know, because he's, him and me, like, we've talked and uh, we've had deep conversations. I guess we both adopted each other. This morning, Kevin has driven outside town to videotape a notorious wreck. Last year, two trucks collided on a bridge and went over the side. Well, the one truck flipped over and landed pretty much right here. Another truck come around the corner about 10 minutes later, five minutes later, smashed into him, and then they both went over, both trucks. Because the recovery was so difficult, the truck has been left where it landed. That's the worst one I've seen. I hate bridges, just because I've seen so many trucks go off them. The experience stirs up Kevin's own fears. I'm never in too big of a hurry, because I don't want to die. You do enough of these truck wrecks, you just learn to slow down, right? One of his biggest fears is his own rescue truck. My new truck, you know, I get scared driving that. It's a little different truck for me. It's very scary. That's a city truck. 
That truck's normally going out from a fire hall to going five or 10 miles and back again. Everybody else's truck here has a hood on it and a motor in front of them. So if they get hit, they got some protection. If I get hit, I got no protection. Like this bumper is just a bumper, right? It, it'll, it'll get squished just as quick as I'll get squished, you know? Pretty scary to think about sometimes. I don't need to die for my jobs. At the scene of yesterday's rock slide, a team of scalers has been called in to make sure the cliff is stable. They're led by Mike Rasta Blasta Hall. Rasta Blasta. As people say, what do you do? I say, I hang off ropes and blow up. Ugh. I went into business 11 years ago under Camara Springs Rock Work. I started rock scaling when I was 18. I mean, it's a pretty cool job. Once you've been up there, I mean, it's not like you can go back to sitting at a desk. You know what I mean? You, you need the rush. Uh, today, we're just trying to stabilize this bluff. Once you've had a slide in an accident, and the only way to make it safe is to go up there and check it. That's where the original slide came from the other day. Just old weathered rock. It's all split open, cracked, busted, lots of big voids behind it. But we'll get in there and make it so if nothing else is loose, and that'll be about it. This is a scaling bar. It weighs 17 pounds. This is to open the crack. You use the, the pick. And then once the crack is open, then you use the the spoon to open the crack up. And then you just use your force the rest of the way. They're allowed to close the road for no more than 20 minutes at a time. If you go over 20 minutes, that's your limit. The whole thing is keep the traffic moving, right? That's why we're here. Adding to the pressure, it starts to snow. My fingers are numb. Oh, come on, fingers, get warm. You just everything's twice as hard when it's snowing. Normally, we don't work in the snow, but this is an emergency call out. Oh, yeah. It's fishing right here. Basically, the, there's two main causes for destabilization in the canyon. You've got what we call frost jacking, like a little bit of water will get into a crack, then it freezes at night. The ice expands, so the crack gets a little bigger, more rain gets in, freezes again, and then the trees. Because everywhere there's a tree up there, it'll be growing into a crack. Trees can move mountains. You guys are gonna get picked Whoa! off. All right, uh. That was a near one. Kids stay in school. Yeah. Uh, this is when you tell them that. Mike pays close attention to the safety of his crew. Somebody's got to watch, because when you're up there, you usually get kind of a tunnel vision. You're focused on, on the one you're taking. Oh, that one almost my leg. Yeah, buddy. Ah. Get the hand, hurry up, Connor. We got about eight minutes. I want this hand done. Just let me get this little stuff. We got to run traffic. I mean, well, it's all this stuff is loose. I can't leave it. Guys, got about four or five minutes. Come on, get that one out and tighten her up. Don't make me come up there and make you monkeys look bad. Okay, guys, you gotta tighten her up, buddy. I'm working on it. There's still a couple, hold on. The last boulder they want to break loose isn't budging. It's all the roots that's holding it, eh? Oh, no, that's solid. Oh, she ain't going oh, nowhere. She ain't going nowhere. Okay, you guys can come down. Okay. We're good to go, eh, hey, Chuck? Another good day on the hill.
High up on the coke, snow is falling much harder. Can I know in the coke like? Five coming up, uh, Larson, you have to take her real easy, she's pretty slick. Adam heads up to pull a semi out of a ditch. Meanwhile, down in Jamie's yard, Kevin's trying to focus on another wreck. No smokestack. The Koki Holly got my smokestack. That's my passion, I guess you could say. That's my second passion. I'm trying to be my first passion, but I'm trying to make two and two work together, and it's not that easy. Jamie gets word the snowstorm on the Coke has gotten worse. Anybody know what's going on on the Coke? I don't advise anybody to go up at all, period. Okay, much appreciated there. Closed, that's what they're saying. Jamie wants Kevin and Sammy to head up the Coke to help Adam. It's just upright in the median Mine Creek, not very far down, right? So that's about all you need so you guys can roll out. But Kevin thinks it's a waste of time. I'll get after the f***ing thing will be done and over with and out of the ditch. I'm so sick of this place. I don't know what to say to him. Be grumpy by yourself, I'm busy. I hope the job's half done by the time we get there. The road's closed. What do you need traffic control for when the road's closed? It's good enough. Put it in his tank. Get wall. Somebody gotta tell him wall. Just put it in his tank. As they leave the yard, there's little sign of the bad weather up on the mountain. There it is, 10 to 6 at night, and we gotta deal with some in the ditch when we could do it in the morning. Yeah. You know, Jamie doesn't care about his personal life, but I have one. I like to enjoy it. heater to clean these windows in this thing for six months. Feels like I can see a foot in front of me, like the windshield wiper's broken on that side for a month. Now here we go, we're really ourselves. I'll go pick it up. I'll do it, you take too long. Something was gonna happen up there. You can just feel it. We'll be okay. Kevin and Sammy are heading up the coke in a snowstorm to assist Adam. As they climb the hill, the storm finally appears. Due to the heavy snowfall up at the top, a highway crew has closed the coke to all but emergency traffic. You're gonna let me through, buddy. Shut the door. I think we'll chain up right here. Get the blocks out. I thought I would never use these again this year. Oh, I'm so sick of winter. I'm so sick of this job. White out conditions. No work. They should close this highway completely. Yeah, they should. It's pretty bad. I don't think I've been in that big. Look, you can't even see. I don't know where that edge of the road is. I know. I barely know where this side is. Yeah. As they climb higher up the mountain, visibility drops to near zero. And that's not the only danger. Anybody out there, I think we need 
type avalanche here. Where? I'm at the chain up and I'm, I'm, uh, my truck got covered in snow. My ass is puckered right up now. The avalanche hit a section of the cope they just passed. Now the road behind them is closed. Got the road closed and now avalanches are starting. We shouldn't even be here. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to put a high hazard. Uh, the, the big slides that came out was much bigger than uh, you didn't expect from the amount of snow that we had. It's holy f I'm scared. I was watching the mountain. I can't believe this right now. This is nuts. On either side of them are known high-risk avalanche paths. Yep, oh, I'm to get sent out in this. You know, there's a thing about safety, but I'm not the boss. I don't make the corporate decision. I'm just one of the lackeys. Goes along for the ride. A snow plows. The road conditions are now so bad that even the plows are getting stuck. Let's stay in here, Sam. I'm a Jamie Davis. So I guess there's an avalanche behind us? Just ahead, he sees Adam's truck. Can I can I get around you just to go up and help them? Is that possible? Well, you can walk, that's what it is. Okay. After 40 minutes of white knuckle driving, Kevin finally reaches Adam. How's it going? Now you show up. But the job he came to help with just ended. And due to the avalanche, they can't go home the way they came. Another waste of time coming up here. I do it. Now I'm, I'm 40 minutes from home and I gotta drive two extra hours to get home. Do you guys want me to go on top? The next morning, Sammy's up early washing trucks with Jamie's son, Brandon. Here. Sun's out, gun's out. Driving this thing it scares the shit out of me, and it scared me again last night. Yesterday was some of the worst conditions I've seen in a long time. Who wants to go up there when the highway's closed? Not me, but we went anyway, you know? Saved the day. Closure's no option, but it was closed. It was avalanche conditions. Why don't we have avalanche beacons? I've mentioned that for a couple of years, like yesterday, we could have used them because we could have been right in that avalanche. We just missed that by less than five minutes. After last night's harrowing ride, Kevin is at the end of his rope. Kevin was telling me that he wants to talk to me about his truck. He's got some issues with it, so just waiting to get an earful from him. One, that truck's got no protection if somebody hits me. And two, you know, if we don't have avalanche beacons and something happens or peeps, <laughs> nobody can find us. We were in a bad avalanche zone last night. How come we don't have peeps? We'll get them, we won't need them now. We but won't need them next, now, next but spring, I mean. Next winter, if you're still here, we'll, we'll get that done. If he doesn't want to get them, I'm just going to say no. I'm not going up when there's avalanche risk, you know? That's my safety, and I'm the captain of my own ship, so in the end, I don't want to die. For Sammy, this afternoon begins a rare weekend off. Take me home, brother. 
His plan is to spend it like he always does, hitching a two-hour ride to visit his family. When they do a delivery out there, like taking a car to salvage or something, I catch a ride. Sammy's wife and three children live in a Vancouver suburb. The work is 24-7. Here I come and I relax, sleep, eat, and do a little workout stuff and with the kids. <laughs> Once in a while, my dad comes around, we just spar a little bit, you know, try to keep him up to shape, I guess. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Oh, hold up. <laughs> Hold on, my pants coming out, bitch. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> hey, you're not supposed to hold. Sorry. He's a very happy, joy guy. He's a good dad, and he's raised us pretty good. Bula! Back in Hope, Kevin takes the rescue truck out for a late night run. I've been doing a lot of thinking in the last little while. I got a lot of years to live yet, and a lot of things I still want to do that I haven't done in life. I would like to get into the film industry and do more shooting. He's going a little faster than I would want to be going without a trailer on a road like this tonight. I might just call her quits because seven years of doing it, I'm, I'm done seeing wrecks, I'm done seeing dead bodies, I'm, I'm pretty much done all that. It's getting to me. I've been driving truck for a lot of years and now it's getting to the point where I don't want to do it. You want my license? I'll give it to you. Next time on the highway through hell. I don't get mad very much, I tell you. That just makes me want to punch him out. Holy moly. A truck full of mail goes off a cliff. What's that noise? And a rotten cable. You get them guys on the other side, tell them to get in the way. Pushes Adam over the edge. Oh, today Adam goes on strike. A mountain of bills. Every 30 days forces Jamie to lay off two of his top guys. It could happen any time to any one of us. Have a secret.